Hello and welcome to Monaco. I am James Hartigan. He is Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And this is the Poker Stars European Poker Tour presented by Monte Carlo Casino. Yes, we are back with our first event here in three years. We're three years away from Monaco. I've saved up enough money to take us to lunch. Very excited to be here. The EPT is back and I am super pumped. Likewise, and we are thrilled to bring you all the action from the biggest tournaments. Roll it. They buried me deep, deep down at a maximum pressure. I never crumbled. I put in maximum effort. They wrote me off. I wrote a new book when hope was lost. I know what it took. I overcame all the odds. You could never put me in a box. I am relentless. I will not stop. Follow the scent. I am a fox. Came from the bottom and now I'm on top. And nobody's taking my spot. <laughs> this is good. It's just some fun. Oh my god! It is a small country, a big place. Wow, you're that good, huh? One of the biggest coin flips in EPT history. With the championship on the line, it's a brick. Chirani is the champion. Mate, what a life. Ready for this, I've been dreaming. This will give everything meaning. Barcelona. Jason Mercier, he went with his instincts, he made yeah. the call. Yeah. There's the professional level, and there's the Ivy League. Come on! Sebastian Pauli coming to terms with what he has just achieved. Nicky Curran has done it! Two main event titles! Sebastian Mallets has gone from poker fanboy to poker champion. This is why people love the EDT. We go live from the Monte Carlo Bay Hotel and Resort for the super high roller final table at the Pokestars EPT presented by Monte Carlo Casino. It's James Hartigan, Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. Plus, Griffin Bender is with us. Monte Carlo, baby. The first of five days of live coverage, kicking things off with the 100K buy-in event. The final table playing down to a winner today, then segueing straight into the main event. Days two, three, and four, concluding with the final table on Saturday, May 7th. Live every day at 12.30 local time, the exceptions being the final tables, 1 p.m. Central European Summer Time. We'd love to hear from you over those five days. We've got the live chat on Twitch and YouTube. Whether you're watching at twitch.tv slash pokestars or youtube.com slash pokestars, you can use the hashtag on Twitter, Pokestars TV. And of course, there's all manner of good stuff happening on our Facebook and Instagram pages. And our Tinder. Great to have you with us here on the Riviera. And here we are inside what I still consider to be the most beautiful poker room in the world, the Sal des Etoiles. And guys, we have on the main stage a brand new set for EPT 2022. Not bad. The European Poker Tour is here and we have got six high rollers, super high rollers, gracing that stage, taking their seats to compete for the trophy and a seven figure first prize. Yeah, and former, former Monte Carlo main event champion and Adrian Mateos, who is, um, <laughs> no surprise, a massive chip leader here at this Super High Roller <laughs> final table. And, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, my favorite poker player. I shouldn't pick favorites for the booth, but Adrian Mateos, uh, I've been watching him since he Good was 18 choice. coming up, and he's incredible. And I mentioned it's a seven-figure first prize. They played into the money yesterday so 42 total entries six get paid everyone's locked up more than 285 grand nearly a million euros for the runner-up nearly 1.4 million for the winner plus of course the super high roller title and trophy total prize pool of just over 4 million euros and the players are in their seats it won't be long until we get cards in the air and you will get to see every single hand live as we play down to a champion. Well, Griffin, you said you were excited to see Adrian Mateos in action. He won the main event here in 2015. He's won so much more than that. He's got $25.6 million in live earnings, and he is the monster chip leader with better than a two-to-one chip advantage over the guy in second place coming into play today. He got here over an hour ago to start st stacking those chips. <laughs> 
and he's still doing it. So this is Kent Stahler, a businessman from Norway. He is CEO of an iGaming company. He's a recreational poker player, but he is coming into play here with 1.23 million. Only has three recorded live caches, Griffin, for a total of four grand. Hey, I, I've actually spent a lot of time with uh, with Norwegians in my time back in my gaming days and in my poker days. Don't count them out. They're, uh, they're sharp, cunning guys. So that is Laszlo Bushtas. You may know him as Omaha for Rolls online. Five scoop titles, two W Coop titles, nearly four million in live earnings. And then we have the first of two Belarusians at this FT. This is Nikolai Vaskoboynikov. Has nearly two million in live earnings. Came fifth in the 50K event in Barcelona back in 2018. The other Belarusian, you're going to recognize this guy, Mikita Bodzikovsky. He is 13th on the all-time money list. He's the shortest stack at this final table, Griffin, but still has 22 bigs. Yeah, and, and there are a few players in the world that are going to play this stack better than Mikita, so uh, do not be surprised if we see him rise through these ranks and finish in the top three. And last but by no means least, it is Marius Giersa from Austria. We know he was fifth in the EPT Prague main event back in 2016. Is a high roller reg in the live and online games. Gears! <laughs> so we are halfway through level 16. Blinds are 15,000, 30,000 with a 30k big blind <clears throat> ante. Let's do this. Live Thank poker you. being played in Monaco for the first time in three years. The EPT is back and we are go. 100,000 euros, super high roller, no big deal. Hand number one of the FT. I know, I, I don't have... Uh, I you know, I don't want to say Monaco's expensive, but the fountain outside my hotel is full of bitcoins. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like I'm going swimming later. <laughs> so folded to Bodzikovsky, who has ace-king. Pretty fun start here for Told the shortest he was good. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Just coming through already. Opens with a raise to 65,000, and the action is now on Marius Giesa, who's the second biggest stack at the final table. 66 big blinds, folds ace nine suited. Yeah, it's a pretty, uh, you know, it appears to be a pretty tight fold, but just situationally, I think Gerza realizes with that particular hand. You know, I think ace-10 of clubs, ace-10 suited might find a flat there, but you don't really want to, you know, three-bet fold a hand like that, and uh, calling seems a bit tough to play. Three people behind, a lot of people that can squeeze, and this is a pretty strong raise to, to open up the final table for Makita, so I think that's a very disciplined fold there. So we already have our first mini sweat with. We've only got one of Bush says his whole cards. We know he has the eight of hearts. He's defended his big, and we are going heads up to the flop. And that flop is ace, king, seven with two hearts. Pretty decisive board for Budziakowski. And a fantastic fold of ace nine. <laughs> Don't want to get yeah. in this situation where you have to do the courtesy double up, get it in on this flop yeah. once you hit top pair. Yeah, and really the only way we can see it continue um, from... Uh, the big blind here would be if that other card is another heart or perhaps an, an ace or a king. If a small enough bet comes out, maybe if Bustas has something like 8-7, we could see it continue. A C bet and a fold. Bodzikowski wins the first hand of the day, the first hand of this super high roll-up final table. Fasto asking, will you stream the main event too? Yes, from tomorrow. So they played day 1A yesterday. Today is day 1B. All the survivors will come back tomorrow for day 2, and that's when we'll pick up the action. So this is live. Well, we're on a 30-minute delay right. to protect the integrity of the players' cards. I don't cards. count that. I don't count that. The reality is we are broadcasting live. We're seeing this, guys, the same time that you're seeing it. And quite frankly... 30 minutes is short enough. No one other information is being pumped out. It's not like there's any live reporting on this event that's going to have spoilers in it. What I meant to say was this is happening today. Yes. This is not from another time. No, I this can tell today. you oh, yeah. it is Tuesday, May 3rd, 2022. Where, where, where do you think you are right now? <laughs> Here. <laughs> Wherever I go, there I am. Mm.
Got a question on Twitch here. What was the buy in 25K? Wrong. Double that. No, quadruple that. $100,000 buy in. Euros. Euros. Buddy. Real money. Yeah. Two and a half fountain coins. <laughs> <laughs> so Mateos in the cutoff with Ace Jack. Has a 150 big blind stack. Is the chip leader of the final six. Has opened to 60k. And it's been folded to the big blind. Uh, Vasko Vinokov will pass and show 90. Yeah. <laughs> 90 has got to be what? Top three worst hands? Right? B bottom three? Worst hands? Bottom three, yeah. 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 It's up there. Third worst, right? Yeah, it's down there. Would 8-3 be worse? Yeah, 9-deuce would technically be better than 8-3. Oh, right. It feels yeah. worse, though. It does feel worse. 8-3 yeah. feels like they're, you know, ready. they're ready to double down. They're almost <laughs> able to mix straight. Right. <laughs> Just with, the, you know, one more evolution. Yeah. Are you guys still Get your votes out there in tight? chat. Uh, <laughs> what's always worse, 8-3 no, or 9-deuce? <laughs> Adrian, not so tight. Look at this position on me. What can I do? Trash. Bye. <laughs> Oh, we've got a know-it-all on YouTube. Uh -oh. Extreme says, this is not live. I'm in Monte Carlo now. Oh, Extreme. If you're in Monte Carlo, prove it by going to James's hotel, the best Western. <laughs> so Mateos is open for the second hand in a row, this time with King Four of Diamonds, and has found a customer, Kent Starlet, calling in the cutoff with Queen Ten. Vaskoboynikov has artisanal sourdough, ace five suited. I think this is a pretty, um, not the strongest of calls for stall here. Um, it's just, you know, it's going to be a little tough to play here um, when you think about the other kind of hands that include queens and tens that are going to be coming into the pot. It's going to be tough to play against the best player in the world, <laughs> even when you're in position. <laughs> even and not really King someone, four. yeah, and really not someone you want to battle with. Um, I, I don't necessarily think it's a bad strategy to find situations. Oh yeah, 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 to uh, to play against Mateos in position, but you know, I would prefer this prefer this hand to be suited. I think. So Kent Stala, 84% favorite on a queen jack jack flop. Action on Mateos. I think Adrian will still fire one out here. This does sort of smash the range of Stolly here, and we can see that, 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 it, that it has, in fact, made uh, him two pair. But, you know, the, the times that Stolly has something like, you know, ace six of clubs or pocket fives um, would fold to, you know, a big bet here a lot of the time. So that's why Mateos is going there. And also, you know, some turn cards that are going to make it so Mateos can comfortably keep barreling like a diamond. Ooh. <laughs> The eight of diamonds, Mateos now with the flush draw, and interestingly, now has 21% equity. I do absolutely live for these matchups, though. The best player in the world, arguably, Adrian Mateos, and businessman from Norway. Yeah. I just love it. I love to see the GTO pros have to, for lack of a better word, dumb it down a little bit and sort of get into the minds of players that aren't exactly going to play what they consider to be standard. Yeah, and, and we see here that Mateos has elected to check on this eight of diamonds, and I think that's because even though <clears throat> Ad Mateos has gotten some more equity, it's it's a bit difficult of a board to bet your opponent off. What are you really targeting, expecting them to fold? They're not going to fold a jack. Uh, do we really think that Stala is going to fold, um, you know, a queen or a big spade draw that probably is a straight and flush combo? Or a straight draw, yeah. Yeah. So Mateos probably going to go for a check call um, and does so. Yeah, 200,000 apiece as we go to the river. Which is a diamond. <laughs> Mateos with the flush. He's good. He's real good. And ace five of diamonds was folded, right? <laughs> Blockers. <laughs> right here, buddy. Blockers aren't real. He's got it on his T-shirt, ladies and gentlemen. Stolo should <clears throat> comfortably be able to check this back. There's not really a lot of hands that you can imagine getting value from, and, and I think well played there post-flop. So Adrian Mateos has just increased his chip <laughs> advantage at this six-handed final table. Player, huh? Now has more than five <laughs> oh, million chips. Yeah. 
and yesterday oh, and the day, day before. Every day is a lucky day. <laughs> Every day is a lucky day. Every day is a lucky day for you, Adrian. Almost not fair when a player uh, like Adrian Mateos, as the, the rest of the t table marking, <laughs> has been so running much. good in this particular no. tournament. Kind of have to to come into the final table of a 100,000 euro buy-in um, with that kind of chip lead. So sometimes the best get lucky too, and it's a dangerous thing to see for the rest of the players yeah. in the field. So Mateos with five mil, that's 167 Seven. big blinds. Seven. And to put things into perspective, the second biggest stack, Marius Giersa, is playing 64 big lines. So like 7, 10. Griffin, I kind of felt like a, a ICM <coughs> traffic jam coming up here for the next couple levels. What do you suspect? Yeah, and, and frankly, Mateos is going to be able to direct that traffic. Um, and it uh, it's, it's, could, could, does have the potential to really be a fun thing to watch. You know, Stalo's obviously lost a little um, luster there, slipping under a million, going to have to play a little tighter, now playing around, you know, less than 30 big blinds. So I expect it to be the Mateo show for sure. Is this just a, 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 a slam dunk re-raise against a chip leader under the gun open? Going to be opening wide. We just saw him open <laughs> king four diamonds. Yeah, I think this is, uh, you know, sometimes you want to play a hand like ace-jack as a flat. But here when, um, you know, obviously it does give the opportunity for Mateos to sort of blast it all in, the, in there. Most of the time you're going to probably find a fold or just a call. But he's yeah. putting it all in Oof. there. And that is just power poker. Mateos so recognizing, sick. yeah, recognizing, you know, my opponents will take hands that are, are pretty strong value hands and turn them into bluffs, not willing to call all in preflop. And King Queen, I know we don't like to talk too much about blockers with the two of you, but it's a great <laughs> blocker hand in respect to, you know, it, it eliminates some ace kings and ace queens and kings and queens. So it's a pretty nice hand to four bet shove there and, and fold out some better hands. And those are the chip denominations. The smallest are the blues, which are worth 5,000. The mint chips are 25,000. The blacks, which we saw Mateos stick in there, 100K each. And we are now playing hand five of the super high roll-up final table. Six players remaining. 42 total entries in this 100K buy-in event. Yes, and Mateos yeah. gets a walk <laughs> with eight three. <laughs> it is better than nine deuce. So it's such an obvious choice to say nine deuce is better than eight three. We know, we know nine is technically a bigger card than eight. Mm. But be creative. But what's yeah? But what is it? You know, live a little. What feels? Feels terrible. <laughs> they both feel terrible. I don't know why we're doing this. Havana banana. <laughs> Montana banana. That's what we used to call nine deuce. Mm. Roboto man says, if this is live, then say happy birthday to Dwayne Johnson. No, I will absolutely not do that. Pocket Kings for Laszlo Bushtaz, and it's sorry, an under the gun race. This feud between James and The Rock <laughs> yeah, is like, if, if it's, it's, the Rock's it's birthday, gone on we're way have too to long. Acknowledge it, yeah. Like, you need to, you know. I don't know what he did that upset James so much, but. <laughs> I'm with Tyrese. <laughs> <laughs> Kent Stahler defends with 5-4 off, and we are going to the flop. And it is an oh, eight, no. seven, six oh, no. board. Somebody call an ambulance. I'm waiting for the for the big sigh. The businessman flopped the nuts sigh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For some reason, if this happened to anyone else but like um, amateur. Ooh. I love the check back. This is a situation that Wushtas recognizes. You're not thrilled to just get it in here with, you know, what, eight, nine even. So why not stay under repped, 
Catch some bluffs by like some 9x on a turn like this that my bet is a bluff like a jack 9 or something. I think you're going to induce a lot of bets on the yeah, turn when yeah, you check yeah, that yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. you don't you don't bust. Um, you know, this isn't a let's check the flop and start raising the turn. He's thinking let's let's try to induce some bluffs here and not go broke on this particular texture. Now, I think that would have changed if it was something like 1065. We would have seen some big bets. And and look how you know, Bushes is only going to lose another three and a half big blinds in this hand. So, really, really great stuff here. If that. So, Ken Stahl about 100,000 on the turn. We'll bet on the river for value. Into 375k. I wonder if Stala's bet here is on the smaller size. Yeah, and it is because of that nine, and that's why we're going to have to see a call from Boostus, because this could just be a, a block or queen bet. There are some bluffs, some big hearts, like the ace of hearts. So we're going to have to call that small bet, and feels very good about that check back on the flop. <laughs> yeah. Saving their tournament life. Well, it does mean, Griffin, that Laszlo Bushtas, Omaha for Rolls Online, is now the short stack at this final table, playing 14 bigs. Ken Stahler playing just shy of 40 big blinds, more than 1.1 million. I mean, can you believe it in a 100K super high roller, Kings cracked like that? Where's the whining? Where's the complete? <laughs> Come on, you, you're entitled to a little bit of a moan after that. Everyone's too good. Praise for Stala from Fisherman Bob. Businessman is good. Some might check scared for nine. I, I would have. I would have been like, ah, oh, terrible card for me. Check. 60. Gears! Marius Gears are opening with pocket nines. Rounds the blinds. Kent Stala folds the small. And it is the short stack. Laszlo Bustos in the big with King Eight. Some consideration <coughs> facing this min raise on 14 big blinds, but it, it can be a bit of a trap situation. You can find yourself in some pretty tough spots. Um, but as the short stack, you know, you kind of just maybe want to flop some equity. It would be disastrous um, for Omaha for rules here to find an eight high flop. What about a jack eight three flop, Griffin? Yeah, not one that I think um, Bustis is necessarily going to play as a check shove or anything like that. So um, Jack 8-3 certainly better than, you know, 8-7-3. Continuation bet of 55,000 from Giesa. You know, it'd be a great hand here. 8-3. <laughs> uh, with this hesitation, you know, there, there certainly is a chance Boostus thinks, okay, I'm too short. I flocked pretty good equity here. Gersha could be just see betting something like ace 10. I can take this down now. I'm already last in chips. So maybe that's part of the consideration. I'm sure, you know, um, Laszlo's done the work here and knows what the best course of action is. And that's going to be um, what I first suggested with the call. Turn card is the jack of clubs pairing the board. Doesn't really change anything as far as the dynamics of the hand. I think Gersh are probably going to play this as a check back on most turn cards that aren't a nine. A reminder that we have got the shot clock in play. 30 seconds per decision. Time bank cards available to be used if you need extra thinking time. And action is on Giesa. His clock is running. Checks it back, and we go to the river. And Barry Greenstein makes his first appearance of the day. Shut it down, Mike. Shut it down. Yeah, and really one of five pretty decent cards uh, for Bustas in the in the context of not paying off another bet, not facing another bet. You know, the river's a four here or a six. I think uh, Kiers would go for some value with the nines, but, you know, an ace or a queen. Ooh. 
Yeah, and this is simply just a price setting, not, not trying not to get Gersha to, to sort of use that ace as a bluff, wanting to get to showdown, betting a very, very small amount. You know, could have just played that as a check as well, but didn't want to open up the door too much. So, Laszlo Bustaf loses another part, now playing a sub-10 big blind stack. I'm calling it. He's in the danger zone. Danger zone! Seven hands played so far at this final table. We've seen Adrian Mateos increase his chip lead. Marius Gears is still sitting in second place with just over two million chips. And it's Laszlo Bustas who's become the short stack with less than 300k. He's in the small blind on this hand. 60. And it's Gears opening again. Oh, he's got aces. The rocket's taken off. Cool. <laughs> For all our Sunday Million streamers. I think I saw a call there from Kent Starla on the button. With nines. And with both blinds folding, we are going to go heads up to the flop. Seven, six, deuce, a low board. And this could cost Starla a few more chips. Yes. And I think this is really going to um, be a test for Starla. And I think show a lot of us at home what kind of player he really is. You know, we say the amateur at the table, the businessman. Um, yeah. How are you going to react when there's a huge ICM implications being the third stack here? Finding yourself... Uh, potentially check raised here, playing a, just over 30 big blinds. So Gersa checked it, allows Starla to take over the betting, 90,000, and then check raises to a quarter of a million. Would be disaster to bust in this hand for Starla, and you know, like I said, not an, an immense amount of chips you're playing with here. Um, but you are third in chips. You're going to have to be very, very careful here. And I would be very impressed if we just see saw a straight-up fold on this flop. It's going to be tough to do. We'll see a call a lot. But whatever you do, don't go all in. So he just threw in a time bank card. So he gets an extra 30 seconds on the shot clock. Obviously, we don't know Stella very well. But we can sort of empathize with being an amateur in this situation. Oh. Oh, he shoved. Oh, no. All in with nines on a 7 6 deuce board. Snap called by aces. And Kent Stahler, who's third on the leaderboard, is all in and at risk here, Griffin. Yeah, and um, this is, you know, that's the thing. It's, these kind of situations are very I tough to, oh. to make the best decision for, you know, ICM. And I was you know, sometimes you just have an overpair and you just... You don't believe a guy, and, you know, you play with him for days. Just getting to my point about how you can really feel like you're being bullied in this yeah. situation. 12% is 12%. Turn card Ooh. is close. It's the eight of clubs. Ten outs. Always All of a sudden. And huh? it does uh, give Stala additional outs. In addition to the two nines in the deck. He's open-ended. Fives and tens are working for him as well. The river card is an ace. It is the set for Gearsa, and it's the elimination of Kent Stahler. First player out. Good luck. Did, uh, did uh, you know, a lot of things right, clearly, to get to this point. Battled through some of the best players in the world, um, but just... You know, found himself in a spot, couldn't get away from. We've all been there. Sixth place for 285,000 euros. He's a iGaming executive, right? I just want to see how many people try to give him resumes as he walks out of the room. 
Meanwhile, Laszlo Bushtas with his nine this big blind hard. stack ladders, I mean, and Marius Gierse <laughs> now has nearly three and a half million. He's the moved the up over the 100 big blind mark. Yeah, I know we're being careful about germs these days, but Laszlo Bushtas should really go over and kiss him on the mouth right now. <laughs> Five players remaining now at the final table of the 100k Super High Roller here in Monaco. Gears! Jack Gates suited, under the gun. I like to call it FTA, first to act. A little less violent. Yes, has opened under the gun with Jack Eight of Diamonds. Maskabinikov with King Queen in the small. We changed it to first to act just now, James. <laughs> <laughs> FTA, first to act. Definitely a spot here uh, for the small blind. About 30 big blinds. I think it would be easier to play, um, you know, as a three bet fold. Going to be hard pressed to find Gersha, I think, to have hands willing to shove with. Certainly going to be opening up uh, his range under the gun or first act <laughs> uh, now with those extra chips. Um, but makes wow. what I consider to be a bit of a tight fold, but also understandable. I mean, when you think about the, the two other stacks, you don't really... Now you're third in chips, you know? Yeah. Um, you don't want to find yourself three-betting there and having to play a post-flop pot, pot out of position when there's two stacks, and that's why there was such a long pause. I'm so bad. You can't just call there? You can, but it's just, it's just uh, you know... I, th I think taking the aggressive action in a situation like this is going to be a lot easier Far to preferable. play. Yeah, yeah it's just, it's just because easier. you're going to get so many folds pre-flop from the from the under the gun open there, <laughs> and when you do call, you know, not to say that your hand is face up, but, but your but range, range is very tight. much super those kind of Broadway know, hands a lot. Super. It's going to be hard to make money from you know very worse good. kings and worse queens and a lot yeah, of the time. So I think. Only seen aces. And nine. Okay, yeah. Nine, I I, I'm actually curious what the, you know, these, these super the high rollers and stuff, what their small blind flatting range even is there. Yeah, um, right. Um, if you're not playing a hand like King Queen, what are you mixing in there, or are you mostly three betting? Not in position to complain, huh? Not in a position to complain. Well, that hand ended up being a raise <laughs> and take it for Marius Gierse. Now we move on to hand 10 of the final table. Blinds going up in six minutes. I guess the nine big blinds of Laszlo is like a huge factor there too. Yeah, that, that's like I think that's the, the biggest factor. That's the tiebreaker. Yeah. in the in the mind, for sure. How much do you start with? I'd like to think that no, if I were around. somehow miraculously sitting at this table, I would Thank you. come to that same decision. Just look at those nine big blinds and look at how much money yeah. you get for la outlasting a nine big blind stack. But, you know, all these players, even when they do have nine big blinds, I mean, that's Omaha for rolls, Joe. A tough out. You know, it's not going to just be this blind out thing. Or sure. You're not waiting for, you know, a businessman to, you know, maybe overplay a hand like pocket <laughs> nines. It's like now you're you're in the stuff with these with these superstars. So um, sometimes you need to find little pressure points. And I think that might have been a go good opportunity um, for... Uh, Basket Boynica. How many cough, oops? Cough. How many oops does... Uh Bush does have six oops total. Oh, if you add together scoops and W coops, you yeah, mean. oops. Uh, seven totals. So five, seven oops. Five <laughs> scoop titles, two W coop titles. He is fourth on Hungary's all time money list, and he has nearly four million in live earnings. He actually won a 25K event at the last EPT Barcelona. That was in August of 2019. That was worth 700 grand. The guy's pretty good at poker. Yeah. I wonder if every time Naza wins a win, wins an oop, he turns to his friend, he goes, oops. Oops, I did it again. <laughs> oops. Yeah, he throws on oops, I did it again. <laughs> oh, Naza just fell short of making this Queen final high. table. Of course. And this only paid six, right? 
Correct. Correct. They played six, down five. to the final sixth, Correct. into the five money minutes. last night. Five Sometimes I think about it a little too hard that 30 some odd people put up 100K and only six people got paid and it like makes my heart race. <laughs> it's so gross. I would just be like, guys, we don't have to do this. We can all just <laughs> take our money back. So another walk for Adrian Mateos on the previous hand. Now on to hand number 12. And Mateos has Jack 8 in the small. Already eyeing the short stack <laughs> <laughs> of uh, uh, Omaha for rolls here. And does what appears to be an effective all in. Yeah. And Jack 8 definitely a hand you're going to do that with. All in to call with 10 7 of diamonds. Pretty pretty nice hand to see three with, but very difficult to call off, um, you know, for your last eight big blinds. And that is a fold. UK Most Hated asks, is Spraggy playing well? There was a nasty incident where Spraggy thought he was One, good enough to... Two. I'm just counting the bullets. Yeah. yeah. Spraggy yeah. fired off multiple yeah. bullets in the 100K in the Bahamas yep. a few Five. years back. Five bullets. And suffice to say, he learned his lesson and has never gone near the super high roller streets since. I think I saw him peering over the hedges <laughs> looking at this 100K yesterday. <laughs> Licking his I, chops, I, but I wish I was in on this this bit because it's so specific. I guess this is like some, uh, I guess we're running. It, I mean, it's a very short story. Is a Spraggy, um, you know, did relatively well leading up to the last hundred k in the Bahamas. No, but you're joking. Just went off for five no, bullets. Hey, stop, you guys. <laughs> not look. It's not really a great look for an ambassador to have such poor bankroll management. I don't know. Maybe. Uh oh. Yeah, Bush to all in, folded him in the small blind, shoves with ace five, and it's Vaska Boynikov with the decision. Jack ten in the big. It's really close. Um, yeah, and there it's a call. Yeah. And we get an all in at the final table, and it's Laszlo Bushtaz who's at risk, but he does have the better hand, ace five. But with two live cards, Vaska Boynikov isn't that far behind. Yeah, for just eight big blinds, you kind of have to put in uh, the jack ten here. You're, I would say, Slightly ahead of, of the range of the shove. So you take your odds. Pretty fair fight. What's fair here is for Ace High to win. You truly believe that, don't you? That's what you think is the right thing that should happen. Yes. <laughs> and there is an open-ended straight draw for Vaska Boynikov. And, he and it got closer, James. Is now the statistical favorite, even though Ace High is officially the best hand right now. And the rightful winner. Card. How about that? Three of spades. Ooh. And that is Broadway for Vasco Boynikov, and that's game over for Laszlo Bushtaz, second player eliminated from the super high roll at final table. Did get that ladder, though, and that's Thank the you. thing to accentuate, Griffin. Got the extra payout, got the extra money because of that questionable move by Ken Stahler. Yeah, and it wouldn't be oh, a final please, table uh, elimination without an awkward one person puts out the bump, one person puts out the handshake, <laughs> you know? <laughs> we need at least one of those um, playing for literally millions of dollars. His last name is an anagram for Ace Jack Bust. <laughs> 366,000 euros. And we are down to four as we start level 17. Blinds are up. 20,000, 40,000 with a 40K big blind answer. Okay, feel free to gamble, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> they will be happy. <laughs> oh, I guess they're going to be putting the blinds up on the next hand. Teos, Queen 10 suited, has opened.
Very quickly, just four remaining here. Yeah. I mean, 30 minutes of play, Griffin, and already two eliminations. And at the moment, and I know it's no limit hold them and a lot can change, especially as the stacks get shallower, but it kind of looks like it's Mateos versus Kiesa for the win, right? Yeah, I mean, those are very significant um, 20, 40, right? chip edges right now. Combined 8 million chips for Mateos and Gersha, and just to combine 1.7 for the fourth and fifth place players. So, um, but, you know, we talked about <laughs> don't be surprised if we see Makita yeah, slip into the final three here and already just somehow found a way to get to the final four. Yeah. I would be fine to play with one, one ace. Just jam it and play versus your two cards. <laughs> you have like 15 big men, right? Five, six, I have total. Yeah, closer to 20. So Bodjakovsky started today as the shortest stack and is now back in that position, just shy of 20 pegs. But a lot of playability here, um, you know, not necessarily a lot of shoving. We're going to see a lot of small ball, I think, situations like this limps with the computer hand, QWERTY. And this is unraised, blind v blind, queen seven versus jack eight. And we have a queen seven three flop, two pair for Bodzikowski. Not a big Queen 7 guy myself, but when I do play it, that's that's kind of what I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> that's top level analysis. <laughs> I don't always play Queen 7, but when I do. I'm looking for top two pair. Action goes check, check on the flop. We get the deuce of spades on the turn. Yeah, and uh, Fadziakowski here just looking for, you know, or should it pick up any form of a lifeline, really? Just checking it on the flop, trying to let his opponent either start bluffing, you know, betting a club draw, finding a piece on the turn. But the deuce, I mean, uh, you know, Makita, I think, is expecting a lot of the time to bet here and, and get a get a fold, which is just, just too bad. Sometimes you hit the board a little too well, and it doesn't change enough for your opponent to, uh, to have any interest. You know, if it turns an 8, 9, 10, Jack, we'd be spinning a different story. I know it's stating the obvious, but the reality is it's not enough to just make a big hand. You need your opponent to make something as well. Yeah, yeah. And that's, you know, I, I think this goes without saying, but it, sometimes it bears repeating, and that's what makes sets in particular so valuable is because um, there are more there are other cards on the on, on the table that people can just be making mid pair top pair you know when you have something like bottom set it's just uh, it's great you don't block all the strong hands you need the iPad guy like Titan has <laughs> I also like take all the phones it's good and straights straights are great flop a straight James Woo. that big very nice he's got pairs man very nice King Jack 10 you sleep Sneak little Jack Nine in there. <laughs> you know they got a queen. They got a king. So again, we have a blind v blind situation. Marius Giersa completes from the small. Yeah, don't expect uh, Giersa here to have much of any raising range into the chip loot air blind on blind. Gonna have to kind of pay his fealty almost. Be like. Oh, just gonna limp in here and you know you do what you want and I'll uh, you lead this dance yeah it's eight seven versus ten nine and I believe ten high is still the best hand not anymore because the seven it is coming and it's given gears a pair well it's, it's always coming seven 80 That's 80,000. Adrian's got that look. Yeah, Don't fall for it, Adrian. Almost full pot, Griffin. 80 into 90. It's probably just a bit of posturing from Mateos. Just establishing. I'm always thinking about 
playing back at you, even yeah. when you bet pot. You can't just bet pot on the turn on me here and not sweat it. Like, that's not going to be a thing you're going to be allowed to do. So just a bit of showmanship, all pretty calculated. Having said that, I'm not in the head of Adrian Mateos. Could have also been considering doing something a little trickier, like a raise. Always thinking, probably, in some way of, of ways to win pots. <laughs> and the big side from Gershie, you might wonder maybe if the, that's because of that little sweat that the Mateos. I mean, you're sitting there with your 8 7, you're thinking this is a pretty good hand, but if Adrian Mateos comes raising on that turn card, you're, uh, yeah. you're not long for this hand. And 17 of the FT. A reminder that this is the first of five days of live coverage here from EPT Monte Carlo. Day 1A of the main event is in the books. Day 1B being played today, and we'll follow it from the start of day two tomorrow, all the way through to the final table on Saturday, May 7th. Hope you can join us every day for our Cards Up coverage of what is proving to be a pretty big European Poker Tour Festival. The numbers have been very impressive in pretty much every tournament, Griff. I'm guessing that people want to play live poker again. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> One of the many things that people have missed the last few years, but oh, there's something about live poker, and especially at a venue such as this one, such a prestigious event. Really the, the crown jewel in my eyes of the of the European Poker Tour over the times I've been coming uh, over the last, uh, you know, 10 years. Uh, so we've got three players in the flo in the pot here. Uh, Giesa opened to 80K, called by Mateos, called by Vaska Bynikov, and it is the Belarusian who's flopped best. Yeah, a rare three-way pot, but... Something that be could become a bit more commonplace just with the massive stacks between Gersha and Mateos. Um, you know, when Gersha does open and Mateos wants to enter the pot, especially a hand like pocket twos that you don't really necessarily want to play as a three bet, that gives an opportunity for, um, you know, the big blind to come along sometimes. Yeah. 88% equity now in this three-way pot. And it goes check, check, check again. Nine on the river. I'm not Woody asks, what's the blind level? We're currently playing 20,000, 40,000 with a 40K big blind ante. Still 51 minutes to run on this level, and then we'll take the first break of the day. How can I win this pot, thought the young Mateos. And just such a an intelligent bet here uh, from Mateos. What can I bet to fold out a hand like a nine or a seven, yeah. which existed amongst the two other hands? Finding a way to win the hand there with po with pocket twos, betting a large size, sort of representing a check through ace but also you know something as strong as a you know a big 10 there certainly would would feel pretty comfortable enough to bet that kind of size so uh nice hand from adrian he's a bit good at the pokers that yeah, adrian Mateos. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. electro man so do these guys still have time to buy into the main event today yes they do because registration will be open throughout the day so they can join at any point on day 1B. Plus, registration doesn't actually close until the start of day 2. So even if they wanted to rock up tomorrow, as long as they get their money in before noon, they will have a seat, they will have a stack, and they will be a contender. And one of them will be about 1.4 million euros richer. Yes. And expect to see fireworks here, at least from Badzia Koski. I don't know about from Gersha. Probably going to be a bit too many chips facing a shove here. Badzia with the snowmans facing a raise of 80,000. And that looks like a virtual all in there. Has left himself one chip. Thank you. 
fight off him. Mikita going for that manual recheck. Our dealers are the best in the business, Mikita. So as things stand, Mateos has 140 range, begs. Gear says 77 begs. Vaskoboynikov, 26 no begs. Range, King Jack. King Jack. <laughs> King Jack. And Bodjakovsky is the shortest stack at the final table with 17 big blinds. Side range. Action starts with Adrian Mateos. Folds the queen five. Jack four off. A fall from Vaska Boynikov. Bodjakovsky in the small. Deuces. They never loses. Yeah, small pairs are always an interesting um, hand to kind of play in this, you know, sort of 15 to 25 big blind range. Sometimes you want to play them as sort of a limp shove. But something like deuces with 17 big blinds, I think Makita will lean towards just an open shove. You don't really have a ton of room um, to find a limp shove and get a raise from a weak hand. You don't want to limp this and have your opponent shove an aggie, uh, yeah. a raggy ace into you and you have to fold the deuces. Ooh. And this is big trouble for Gersha. Has to call, knows it. And know, almost it a bit of a nit roll. It's a domination situation and Bodziakowski is at risk and behind here. <laughs> 18% equity with deuces. Gearsa, 4 to 1 favorite with sixes. But you know what they say, James? Going quick so far. Yeah. Are you going to start hammering down. the whole ducks fly together bit? <laughs> <laughs> hey, he said it, not me, guys. All right? First takes cannot always bust. Yeah, it's weird. Usually, usually the shots take the double up all the time. You notice, you Here comes the flop. Flashes, you block in straights, like There's a deuce. <laughs> Not the deuce, though. <laughs> and it is a set for Bodzikovsky, who the now v. becomes <laughs> a nine to one favorite with two cards to come. Next are drinking two. Quack quack. Gears that just has to fade. Or rather, Bodjakovsky just has to fade a six on the river to double up and survive. The river card is an ace, an inconsequential Greenstein. And courtesy of domination rotation, Makiti Bodjakovsky will no longer be the short stack at this final table. 37 big blinds now. You think Barry knew when he made when he wrote that book and came up with that title? Like this is aye, aye, aye. this is a good title. Do you think he just thought of the title and said, "I have to write a, like a biography now because it's a great title"? I think he probably started with the idea of writing a book, then came up with the title. What I don't think he realized oh, was it would then become a meme. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <coughs> Bodzikovsky, just shy of 1.5 million. It is the other Belarusian player. Mikolai Vaskoboynikov, who now has the shortest stack, but 26 bigs. Still very pliable, still pretty comfortable. And 20. Eight six of hearts, folded. Bodzikowski on the button. One mil. Suited queen gonna give Makita a bit of pause, but I think you're gonna have to let this one go. Playing about 35 big blinds, you now are in a position where you can. <laughs> yeah, the haunting ducks just almost defeatedly throws in the limp. Deuces again. Yeah, gears are completing. Mateos, king eight offsuit. 160. 160. And raises. 
Yeah, I think this is a fine hand to work into your sort of ISO range. You're going to get a lot of sort of limp snap folds sometimes from Gersha, but certainly not with this holding even to a 4x. 60 big blinds effective. Cool. Going to have to play this extremely defensively the whole time, pretty much, Gersha. Even in the in this, even in the context of flopping a set, just oh man. Gin Daddy! And to be the best, you gotta get lucky too. And would you look at that flop? It's a good flop, James. It's a pretty, pretty good flop. I mean, <laughs> run better, Mateos. And an interesting decision for Gersha because gonna recognize that you're you're pretty probably pretty good here with the two pair of deuces and kings a lot of the time. Maybe calling here is going to freeze your opponent. Um, <clears throat> but it would be disaster were a deuce to peel. I wonder if Adrian ever finds a, a check on this turn. Maybe recognizing that ace highs are probably going to be folded out anyway. But I feel like you're probably going to find a bet a lot of the time to try to get some more value from those diamond draws. Maybe turned hard draws. Something like, you know, ace five of hearts certainly would have called the flop. But you don't want to bet too much, I don't think, and scare away your opponent. Yeah. You have the board so pipped here, and you can see even the 160 is going to fold out. The pair of twos. VJ Windsor says a better flop would have been King King Do. So it depends whose side you're on. That would not have been a better flop for Adrian Mateos. Adrian, it's 1.1. Thank you. Mateos closing in on the six million mark, Griffin. 5.8 mil, 145 bigs. He's got Nearly a three to one advantage on Gersa, who's second on the leaderboard. Yeah, and garnering so much respect from <coughs> his opponents that I didn't even see Adrian ask um, the stack of Vaskaboy Nakakov there and just hearing as he was stacking his chips, I have 1.1. <laughs> <laughs> I wish poker was that easy. Just my opponents would, would display on their forehead <laughs> how many exact chips they have every hand. Folded to Mateos in the small blind, ace queen, and possibly setting a bit of a trap here, just completes. Yeah, sometimes you're going to get, you know, an ISO here. Going to be very underwrapped. We have got a King Jack four flop. Mateos way ahead. And actually one of the worst boards for Vaska Boynikov. Um, I mean, if you think about it, it's just just needs a five. No spade is out there. The 10, you give your opponent the nuts. So it doesn't get actually, as far as boards that are unpaired for Mateos, doesn't get much worse for uh, the big blind there. I think I'm a with them, but it's okay. You are not. Electroman, since Joe's here. been awful quiet. Yeah. Joe's just taking a short break. He'll be back for the start of the next level. We've got 40 minutes to play of level 17. Then we'll take our first 20 minute break of the day and then we'll come back with level 18. I can't believe you guys let, uh, let Joe bring his hot dog cart. I saw it outside there. Um, yeah. Taking a little hot dog break. We got the hot dogs. We got the pancakes. We got the smoothie stand. <laughs> I did have a smoothie yesterday. It was it was delicious. Complimentary smoothies. Yeah, that's that's a move. That's a power move. But it's also put beside the stand where you can get five dollar banana bread. So I end up spending money anyway. <laughs> yeah, and the kind of hand you aren't thrilled to potentially get in for close to 25 big blinds in an ordinary setting, but when you're blind on blind, yeah. you're probably going to have to play it um, 
four stacks if there starts to be raising. You know, you could play this as a, as a limp shove, surely. I know you tell me not to call you Shirley, James. Sorry. <laughs> well, <laughs> looks like we are going to see a flop. Vaskabojnikov calling, Bodzikovsky checking, and it is a case of domination rotation with that deuce on board. Quack, quack. And, you know, something like ace-deuce is the kind of hand that um, Vaskabojnikov would, would have loved to find an iso from because then you could either just call yeah. the shove or limp shove the ace-10, but not even a hesitation from um, Makita. Just knows these spots so well that, you know, going to quickly check back, stay under wrapped with that ace-deuce, and uh, sometimes you just flop better and getting value right away, which I love. You're going to get some check calls here from some worse hands. You fold out hands that have a lot of equity. You know, you think of a hand like king-jack, which would make you know, a jack on the turn, and has given more equity uh, to his opponent. Yeah, Makita hates that turn card. Um, you know, completes something like queen-jack for a pair. Certainly improves queen 10. Jack 10, jack 7, which could play as a check call a lot on the flop here. But Nikita is still thinking. Checks it back, and we get the river card for free, which is the six of spades. Bodzikowski, still good. Yeah, but going to be really tough facing a bet here. Um, and I think that's exactly what the small blind needs to do to try to fold out an eight, but doesn't go for it. Check, check. Bodzikowski wins the pot. He's hovering around the 40 big blind mark as Vaskabojnikov drops down to the 20 big blind mark. I'm surprised that he didn't uh, find a bet there, but if you also think about it, this might have, have a... Seven is always coming, but... There was no a bit of a reputation thing attached to it. I mean, Makita is so tough. You're sitting there, you know, player. and you're thinking, okay, can I even get Makita to fold a nine, an eight here? I don't know. Like, he's so tough, so sticky yeah. in the right spots. Like, I'm just, you know what I missed here? Yeah. I'll let him have this one. And to see him just with a deuce, you know, you obviously lament not finding a bet there. But it's, it's, it's not easy when you're in these situations against arguably one of the best players in the world and most successful in the last five, six, seven years. You play like two million, right? Yeah. One one, please. And you? Sorry? Two point one you saying? Yeah. And I have one point five. To address the question from Charles on YouTube, this is indeed contemporary right. poker. It's happening today. It's happening right now. EPT Monte Carlo twenty twenty two, the final table of the one hundred K super high roller. Four players remaining, competing for a first prize of nearly 1.4 million euros. And Makita Bodjakovsky completing in the small with 8-7 of clubs. Marius Giesa checking his option with a6. These kind of hands going to be where Makita feels, I think, most comfortable. So well studied in these, you know, heads up ICM type situations. It's just so many of these moves are going to be automatic. Bodzikowski fires Giesa with the best hand by far. Has paired his ace. 40k. Yeah, not a lovely flop here for uh, Makita, obviously, but going to get get a lot of folds normally based on the check back range of Giesa. And sometimes you turn a little equity with something like a 6 or a 10. Yeah. But not this time. And you have to imagine that Bodzikowski here is going to be one and done here. Even if you think your opponent only has a nine or a deuce, you know, are we always going to get folds from those hands, especially a nine? We recognize that Gersha could have a checked back ace, which is never going to fold, and you have no equity. So 
I don't think Makita's going to get particularly out of line here. But is going to fire one more. 120,000 into 200,000. Now, there are a range of hands, certainly, that you will get your opponent to fold here. Something like King High floating in the flop, certainly a hand you would expect Gearsha to call, but then fold on the turn. Something like 3 5, 4 3. Uh, and then most of the deuce combos, I think, would find a fold on this turn and some of the nine combos, so. So the board gets straightier on the river with the 10 of spades. Gearsa. Had a lock on this on the turn. And does Bodzikowski just give up at this point? Well, the other thing for Bodzikowski, if we do see a third bet, I don't think we should necessarily be results oriented in, in the losing of this of this three street pot because Gersha could still very well call with something like, you know, a jack nine, a king nine um, on that turn and, and certainly be willing to fold once a 10 rivers. And I think that's what Mikita is thinking about. It's if I think my opponent has, you know, a sticky nine, is it worth it to me to mix that in with the, all, all the other combos of hands that Gersha has, yeah. which include the ace rags and some of those queen X's on the flop that may or may not fold to a certain size on this river. So. Uh, Badzikowski has used a time bank chip here and really thinking of a way to win this pot, but I don't know if we're going to see. Yeah, it goes for it. And does elect to go on the smaller side. Oh, well, you know, okay, just over half pot. Yeah, 275 into 440. Let's see if Gersa can find the call. Uh, yeah, I don't think Gersa is uh, going to be able to fold an ace here. I think Badziakowski is targeting those stubborn turn nines and um, those queens that floated the flop. Ace, I think, maybe a bit too high up in the range. But, but Gersa really, I don't know, you know, it, it, it feels like a weird no equity bluff, you know? But you're just too high up in your range. You gotta call with the ace, and does. And that does a bit of damage to <laughs> Bozikowski's stack. Hovering around the one million mark, 27 bigs. Gears up to 65 bigs. And Web13 asks, where's the super high roller eight game? <laughs> Forgive us for not spending hundreds of thousands of euros on a live stream that only Mason Pie would watch. <laughs> Still got half an hour until the first break of the day. Still 30 minutes on this blind level. Mason, I think what you meant is give the person what he wants. Ain't gonna happen, buddy, but love you dearly. Hand 24. walks as Adrian Mateos had today. <laughs> it feels like a lot. Mateo oh started the day as decisive chip leader and has consolidated that position over the course of the first hour of play. Close to six million in chips. Of course, won the main event here back in 2015. That was worth more than a million euros. Looking to win the super high roller in the same location seven years later. I have to count everybody's money. I will come. You have to. 
Gears uh, opening on the button with Queen 9, makes it 80,000. Oscar Boynikov, Ace 4 in the big. Pretty good hand to have here in the big blind. Maybe not a fist pump thrilled all in situation for 20 big blinds, but certainly one you can uh, call your opponents going to bet a lot on ace high boards not expecting you to have one much but oh. <laughs> we talked earlier on we did about the joy of flopping a straight and that's the position that Marius Giesa finds himself in right now but we also theorized that most of the time your opponent would have something like a king or the mid card like a jack <laughs> but here it's just it's like a board. There is a Broadway draw to hit that queen, but it's just not worth it at this stage. Yeah, it makes the fold. Hello to Jimmy Bluffett watching on YouTube. Says, set looks incredible. Great job. We are loving our new look for EPT 2022. Really feel we've made the most of the stage inside the Salle des Etoiles. And of course, tomorrow when we're covering the main event, we'll have a bit of outer table coverage as well. Being day two, we can expect there to be world famous bubble coverage in the main event, oh. Griffin. So famous. You know, it's, it's funny, now that you mention it, I think my first exposure to the world famous bubble at, a, at an EPT was my first EPT Monte Carlo in 2012 when I finished 43rd. I remember, I remember there was a photo. I remember what I was wearing. I remember the how I was wearing. It was very, very buzzy, very, very exciting. That was my introduction right here in Monte Carlo. Of course, you've played this event, not the Super High Roller, but you've played this festival a few times. You know your way Three around Three years here, in a right? row between 2012 and 2014. So yeah. you know Monte Carlo like the back of your hand. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you should mention that, James. He's <laughs> referencing my getting lost yesterday. The Meridian is, is just, you know, a three-minute walk next door. Uh, to the beautiful uh, <laughs> venue here, and I, I, I'd looked up where the venue was on my phone, and I, I just put Monte, Monte, uh, Monte Carlo Casino, and it, I got into a taxi that took me 15 min minutes somewhere else, and then I had to take another. Uh, it was just a nightmare. When it was right next door the whole time. So, yeah, take me away from a place for eight years, I'll just forget everything. King Jack 10 on this flop. A7 versus 7 6. A domination situation with no rotation. Skoboynikov cannot win this pot outright, drawing to a chop. And kind of a hard board to, to bluff at even, if you think about it. Your opponent's, you know, not going to fold anything on the board. So you're really just hoping out. The only hands you're really hoping to bet out on the turn are like nine and eight highs, which, you know aren't a huge percentage of what you can get to fold. But by the river, after all these checks, you got to bet something, and that's going to be a nice little value call for, for Badziakowski here. And Yeah, I think that hand almost plays itself there. Um, you know, you can't just have the bottom of your range there. As, yeah. the, uh, as the effective aggressor by being the limper preflop and seeing all that, you know, passivity yeah. from, from Makita. So I'm just curious, Griffin, mm. at the point that the taxi driver took you to Casino Square and you found yourself in front of Monte Carlo Casino and thought, oh, that's the one from Goldeneye. At that point, did you realize I've gone to the wrong place or did you still think, oh, yes, this is the venue I remember? Yeah. So when I got there, I'm like, mm, maybe there's a, like a different like entrance. I know this isn't the entrance. <laughs> and I went to speak to a person. I'm like, I'm looking for the, the poker. And then he's like, oh, you need to go to a sporting something, a sporting club, like over there or whatever. And then I was like, how do I get a taxi? He's like, you need to go down this hill. And I went down this hill, and then I spoke to this lovely lady who was running a stand. She's like, you need to go to Zara, where there's taxis waiting outside Zara. It was just a, it was a whole debacle. My first day here, showing up late, because I was, 
you know, at Zara getting in taxis to try to find the venue that was next door. Uh, not my finest hour. Mooseman writes on YouTube, I think this is a recording. It's not. In your face, Mooseman. <laughs> The funny part was it didn't get any easier once I got here. The whole thing felt like a, you know, a proper scavenger hunt, finding this place inside. I mean, all the winding, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit of a maze here at, uh, at EPT Monte Carlo on the production side. <coughs> but it's all worth it. The important thing is you're here now for the final table of this super high roller. Four players remaining. Hand 28 underway. Yeah, but now all I want is one of those smoothies. <laughs> I haven't seen it. Break in 23 minutes, Greg. Ace King for Bodzikovsky on the button. Do you want me to grab you one? We all get a break in 23 minutes. <laughs> Makita's final table started with Ace King. And now it's going to end. <laughs> the prophecy hath been foretold. So the raise is to 100,000. Marius Giesa. If he has a big pair, will I be like a prophet? Ooh, Ooh Ace 10 in the small. Very interesting spot here for Gersha. You don't want to necessarily get in 27 big blinds. I think I'm doing the math right there. About 26, 27 big blinds with ace 10. Simply because you almost flip-flop with Makita here and, you know, if you do three bad call, you're not thrilled by the range you're up against. Yeah, sometimes you're going to be up against you know, artisanal sourdough for instance, James. But most of the time, it's going to be a better ace. It's going to be pairs. It's going to be some king, queens, king, jacks. So don't be surprised if you actually see what I think represents the top of Gersha's three-bet call range. Thir three, pardon, pardon me, three-bet fold range. I think ace-jack, ace-queen would probably, you know, side call facing a shove. But doesn't want to play this as a flat. Expects to see some raised folds from Makita. But there is some pause from yeah. Mateos. There Third is man another in. player. There is I Mateos. What did I say? With Day starts with Ace King. Day ends with Ace King. <laughs> Kings in the big blind for Mateos. Wow. So we had the open from Bodzikovsky with Ace King. The cheeky three bet from Gersa in the small with Ace 10. And now cold four from Mateos in the big blind with 625k. Action back on Bodzikovsky. What do you do now? No universe where you can fold. You're, you know, I mean, <laughs> you know, uh, Mateos is going to do this with ace-jack, with ace-queen. Um, okay. Sometimes even hands like, like ace-10. Obviously, there are some hands you're losing against, some pairs, but you kind of have to just take your ace-king and go with it. I don't see a world, but this is a spot that Nikita's also studied a great deal maybe making some hero fold to make sure that you finish third and wait for um, Vaska Boynikov to, to bust, but I can't imagine. I just can't imagine. 26 big blinds. Yeah, so Bodzikovsky with 26, 27 bigs behind. Vaska Boynikov, the shortest stack with 15 bigs. The thing is, what does Makita do with ace-jack? Folds it probably pretty quickly. What does Makita do with ace-queen? Yeah. Maybe considers making a massive fold. So, Ace King, you've only put out a min raise out there. Maybe you find some heroic ICM fold from all of this immense pressure. How many are you? So, two time bank cards used so far. And looks like he's got a decent bank of them. Now, these are situations, James, that I think are, are hard to study. <laughs> Three-way pots, you know, these kind of ICM implications, these kind of payouts. 
I can't even imagine what's going through this absolute dynamo of a poker mind's head right now. Can he find a fold of one of the best hands in poker? Just 26 big blinds. And you see at this point that the mask, you know, you have the mask five? comes off. Not the, you know, not the, not the protective mask he's wearing, but the mask of like, I need to, you know, be balanced in the way I look. Like, th there's no secret here. It's like, this is a tough spot for him. It doesn't really, he doesn't need to put on a face and hide what he has. He knows that Mateos is, is committed to the 1.9, 1.1 million chips that will go in if, if Bazikovsky decides to put the rest in. Oh. One of the greatest poker minds in the world in the Hurt Locker right now. Ace King offsuit. About 26, 27 big blinds effective. Five time bank chips okay. deep. Facing a re raise and a re re raise. But it's button, small blind, big blind. Okay, time for number six. Is it the one I'm currently using? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Clearly, he's been uh, saving them up over the last couple of days, Griffin. Honestly, this is, you know, sometimes we complain about how slow poker has gotten. This is not boring to me. This is, I mean, it's so cool to see someone who is often not the most animated player to see the, the flicker in their eyes, you know? How, how much this is challenging one of the brightest players of our generation. So he's just played time bank card number seven, and I've been told our graphic system only goes up to six. <laughs> and you look at those payouts. James, fourth place, <coughs> paying not even half a million euros versus the 1.4 up top and a jump of, you know, close to 150,000 between third and fourth. And you yeah. look at the stack of Vaska Boynikov, just 15 big blinds. You just think of the super highway pathways in his mind just going all over the place. <laughs> oh, I thought it was the cards. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was the cards. Yeah. Maybe I'm going to see the showdown soon, huh? <laughs> Sorry? Now you owe me one. One more? I can, I, can give you, I can give you a few time banks if that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> they are non-transferable. I don't think you're allowed okay. to do that. Pay for him. Time banks? I think he was genuinely asking. No, Gersh, you can't just do that. Okay, that's the last one. Promise? <laughs> <laughs> Famous last words. Guarantee not guaranteed. Also, just be considering okay. the potential, the small percent chance that there is an all-in clash between Gersha and Mateos, but it's so unlikely at the stack depth. But you know, if Mateos and Gersha have aces and kings, and Gersha gets in kings, but even I don't even know if Gersha would just like probably just call. Yeah, very, very, very interesting spot here. Don't worry, guys. He does not have enough time banks to catch up <laughs> with the delay. He'd need 60 time bank cards. Good math, Stat Trek. Well, if the rest of the players at the table give him all of their, their cards, maybe. He folds oh, it. Oh, yes. Lays down the ace king. Wow. The three would have worked. Quick <laughs> fold from Marius. Mateos wins the pot. And 
going to be patting himself on the back and yeah, thinking fine. I have a crush on him I when he know, sees the stream lot. later because <laughs> that, that was just <laughs> oh, exhilarating to watch. Mateos has moved over the 6 million mark, still playing more than 150 big blinds. Bodzukovsky still hovering around 25 bigs. Basket Boynikov on 13. Too easy, huh? Hmm? Too easy. Never this, never this. <laughs> I think it was easy fold for me, like probably eight time banks ago. And then it's got like closer to call. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> And Makita says, at first it felt easy, and then eight time banks later, it, now it feels like... And you know what? It's always going to feel like you made the wrong decision when the yeah. original three better snap folds, and then everyone's yeah. sort of giggling about the situation. You always feel like, well, wait a minute, did I just do something silly? So ace four for Mateos in the small has the short stack in the big. And already... Part of the huge reason why Makita folded such a massive monster hand for him like Ace-King is coming to fruition right away. All of the, you know, ways in which Vaskoboynikov is going to, you know, kind of blind out and be faced with this kind of pressure and has a pretty good hand. It might be, you know, too many chips to call, but does it anyway for 15 bigs, recognizing that the range of Jack-9 suited is probably slightly ahead of the shoving range of Mateos, and it just has so much playability and ways to win. <coughs> You know, I think Jack Nine Off would would find maybe a fold, but suited. Now there is a possibility. This decides to go for it. Worth it. Yeah, <laughs> calls all <laughs> in, <laughs> and it is answer. almost a flip. Let's Has see. two live cards, but is officially behind and officially at risk. And I'm just going to highlight: Mateus has been running pretty solid today. Well, it's looking good for Mateus so far. Ace high still ahead. Has the straight draw. Yeah, and a couple cards that would actually just create a drawing dead situation um, for Mikhailai, like a five or an ace. That's Not the five of clubs. Looking for running clubs, looking for a jack, looking for a nine. Turn card is the four of clubs. So Mateos now with a pair, but Vaska Boynikov has 14 outs. Yeah, that's a lot of outs to, to create. I mean, you think about you know, a jack or a nine, there was just six, so more than doubling the outs there with that club. Jacks and nine still working, clubs good. It's a nine on the river, that's a double up for Vaska Boynikov. Very nice river, and okay, Makita now may be thinking. I want a jam. <laughs> yeah, now Makita joking about, I want a jam, I want the ace king back, like now I'm last in chips. <laughs> So a small dent into Mateos' stack. Still a big chip leader with close to 5.7 million. A 30 big blind stack for Vaska Boynikov after getting that double up. I was kind of sure the term would be the five of hearts. Usually Adrian does it like this. You were, you were rooting for me in this one, I think. How much you got there now? I think he has 1.2 now. 1.2? Yeah. Corey Poker asks, is the ante paid by the big blind and the same amount as the big blind? In a word? Yes. Corey Poker, you nailed it. Shane Windsor asks, whose rail is that? It belongs to Poker Stars. It's made of stainless steel. We had it constructed around the outer rim of the set. As we see gears are open with ace four. Bodzikovsky with queen seven of clubs in the big blind. The computer hand. Why do they call it that anyway? Because it's a court think, D, right? No, I thought it was because a computer calculated it was the average poker hand. Oh, yeah, hand. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this was a long time ago. It probably wasn't a very good computer. Probably like a Commodore 64 or ZX yeah. Spectrum. Nikita, certainly happy to call on those 25, 26 bigs with the suited Quevin.
lot of decent turn cards for Makita if he elects to continue, but it really depends, I think, on the size, the mood. <laughs> no, I mean, this is, I think, pretty well studied from Badziakowski. Whether to continue here against the under the gun range, forehanded at this stack depth, being last in chips. I think for this price, less than 30%, we might see it continue, but it also might come in the form of a check raise. So a reminder, Griffin, that Queen 7 is the computer hand, Jack 7 is the calculator, and 10 7 nice. is the abacus. Technology gets weaker the weaker the hand is. Let's wait for him now. Yeah, let's if wait he, for him. If he needs to go to the toilet yeah. or something. Does find a you know, fold there. Minute, <laughs> yeah. Probably right on the line, but leaning on the side of caution, don't mind. He got too excited by hitting the river nine. Yeah. Looks like. We were not so excited about it. <laughs> a not so well calculated Adrian, bathroom break, I think, oh, no. from. Vaskabornikov with the break coming in just over seven <laughs> Andrew, minutes. Andrew, please tell me you had a pair. But, um, I have a really strong hand. As someone who drinks a lot of water, I sympathize. But mm. he you must be super desperate yeah. if he can't even you make just, it just to the next seven minutes. Yeah, okay. and probably also and can you just relying on the... And wait for him? Yeah, yeah relying on the problem, generosity man. and, and the um, Lord, sportsmanship of, of his opponents as we see all three happily willing to delay until he returns. So a nice little... Nice little bit of sportsmanship here. Yeah. Nice fall. At the super high roller. It's a very small community. Yeah. That these, you know, these hundred okay, yeah, and coming now. Um, not surprised to see this gracious move from these these guys. I hope he washed his hands. Ay, 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 ay. You know, they think he went to the bathroom, but he might have just gone to, like, screaming a pillow in excitement for rivering that nine. <laughs> Mateos opening with ace three. Makes it 80k. Ace jack of strawberries for Bodzikowski. Oh, yeah. Licking his chops here. Just four-handed. You're the bottom stack. 25 big blinds. Wondering if this plays as a three bet call or more of a just a, a straight shove over the open. Um, we're about to find out. One million. So an effective shove. One, one, one million. million. Don't even have a million, do you? One million, ten bucks, and two bucks. Academic. It was uh, practically an all in and it's not getting any action. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think the reason that does play as a shove more than it would a three bed call is has a lot to do with with ICM. I mean, you know, the, the stacks are almost even now between uh, himself and Vaskoboynikov, so one doesn't really million, necessarily want to induce, you know, pair of fours or something in that yeah. spot. Would rather just take it down, and when you do get called, just play it like that, I think. Four minutes until the end of the level. players remaining so we've had two eliminations so far Kent Starla the Norwegian businessman was the first player eliminated and shortly after that 
Laszlo Bustas, aka Omaha for Rolls, was KO'd in fifth place. We have been four-handed for a while. Oscar Boynikov did find himself all in and behind, but hit the river to survive. Blind v. Blind, unraised pre. King 6-3. Tails with the best hand. Pretty standard uh, <clears throat> sort of protection value bet here. Mm -hmm. Gonna take that down quite quickly. And just another day at the office for Adrian Mateos. Started the day. Four and a half million. Up over 5.6 now. Cinco y medio. Was over six million at one point, Griffin. Obviously, then doubled up Vaska Boynikov, but has a very comfortable advantage over the rest of the table. Close to 140 big blinds. Marius Gear said the second biggest stack has 64 big blinds. Button raise from the chip leader. Mateos making 80k with 4-3 of clubs. King 8 for Vaska Boynikov. With the mask, Vaska Boynikov looks a bit like Shannon Shore. I see that. But you know the rules, Griffin, on bad mm. lookalikes. You can only compare poker players to mainstream celebrities. You can't have a poker player who looks like another poker player. Oh, no? No, those are the rules of bad lookalikes. <sighs> James's many published books, Poker Lookalikes. Got to get around to reading that one. Defend from Bodjakovsky, who has flopped a pair of tens. And the second nut low for Mateos. Wait, third nut low. Thanks for clarifying. Glad you got in there before every chat pro decided to join the conversation. <laughs> yeah. You got to get ahead of them, James. You know? If you don't call out your own mistakes, 6,000 people will. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Optimus Clang is loving this table. I would brush the felt of this poker table lovingly, they say. Now, is he speaking to the, the players in this particular, uh, or is he actually, the, 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 the table looks nice and Yes, stroking felty. the table. Not, not okay. the players at the table. He's <laughs> not saying he's going to molest no. the super high no, rollers, no, 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 no. I meant that, like, I don't know, like, metaphorically, like, he loves his ta this, this table so much, he just wants to rub the table they're playing on. You know what? Let's, let's, let's go back to the poker lookalikes. And between all that felt talk, James, felt, felt talk, uh, there are chips in this pot. And um, I would imagine this, I don't know if you were, this, we might have we let this one you know, slip us a bit. I think there might have been a bet. There was. Um, and I would have to imagine it would have come in the form of Adrian Mateos. Yeah, betting in position. Um, Makita now with the block bet on the river to dissuade Mateos from firing that big river bluff. But I don't know. Mateos might still go for it. Which would be pretty awesome to see. So a reminder, Mateos was the pre-flop raiser. He did continue the flop, Griffin, for 55K. Check, check on the turn. Small bet from Bodjakovsky, and here it comes. The raise from Mateos on the river, trying to push Bodjakovsky off the exact hand he has. Yeah, and this speaks to some of the dynamics that we've seen created and, and a lot of blind versus blind situations with these super high rollers where, you know, checked back aces are in the range of the blind versus blind battle. 
Um, and that is what Mateos is trying to represent yeah. um, by raising here over this small bet. You know, certainly within the realm of probability that Mateos would check back an ace five. Yeah. And induces the bet, induces the raise from four high and snaps it off a 10 five. Wow. Oh, man. I mean, gutsy play by Mateos. Great call by Budziakowski. And he is going to finish this session no longer at the bottom of the leaderboard. Mateos will still have the chip lead. Still has a big advantage over Marius Gierse, who's in second place. Bojikovsky up to third, and the other Belarusian player, Mikolai Vaskoboynikov, will go into the I'm next session as the shortest the stack down. with 23 <laughs> bigs because the blinds will be up to 25,000, 50,000 with a 50k big blind ante. He just min bet basically the river with third pair to induce a raise and call pretty quickly. I mean, I'm not saying he's my new favorite player, but he just took that from my favorite player, so pretty amazing. Six stuffs, so two eliminations so far during the first 90 minutes of play. Stala out, Bushtaz busted. Vaskoboynikov, Lodzikovsky. Low but not short stacked. Gierse has more than 50 bigs. Adrian Mateo started the day as chip leader, still has the chip lead with more than 100 bigs. So a 20 minute break for the players. During that break, we're gonna head back to the super high roller from 2016. So six-handed action continues. Hold it around to Olashemian in the cutoff. You mentioned we haven't seen Ola for a while. It looks like he went to the mountains for a few months, trained with a Shaolin monk, drank a bunch of rainwater, learned to fight with a stick. Ace two soft suit. Raises to 130,000. Chip leader Ali Reza Fateh, in the big blind. He's got king four of clubs. Well, that side was real. Cool. He defends. <clears throat> Heads up to the flop. Well, it's a flush draw for Fatehi. Nada for Shemian, but he still has the best hand. Ace high. One club would be good for Fatehi, but two would be bad. Ali Reza leads with his draw. 150,000. It's a draw heavy board. Shemian calls. Little float, lots of runner runners for Ola. And Shemian picks up a wheel draw, but doesn't actually need to improve. Ace high still the best hand. Another semi bluff from Ali Reza. 230,000. Again, Shemi and Coles. All I must be confident he can win this sometimes without hitting his gut shot. Ten of hearts on the river. The board is bricked out for Ali Reza. He's going to fire again. He bluffs at it. 340k. There's really only one card all is worried about, and that's a 10. What are the chances? Shemian only has ace high. But he calls. King high. And that's going to look like magic or lucky or both, but it's neither. It's 100% pure, unmitigated, unadulterated swag. Blinds are up to 50,000, 100,000 with a 10K ante. And on this hand, we are going to sweat with Mustafa. We will only see can it toll cards. You can it stop a Mustafa. He's first to speak. He's under the gun. With Jack Eight of Clubs. That's a raise to 210,000. No action from Shemian or Nui. Kurganov folds the small. Easy peasy. 
It's Ali Reza Fatahi's big blind. We know he likes to defend fairly liberally. We haven't seen a three betting range yet. Call. He's defending again. Fairly confident he wouldn't be playing anything super slow. Well, the flop gives Kennett a flush draw plus a backdoor straight draw, and he has two overs to the board. Pretty great flop for us. You can bet your sweet mustachioni we're going to bet it. 250,000. Raise. Check raise alert. 600,000. First of all, our draw is too good to fold. Second of all, when a guy announces raise like that, like he's kind of annoyed by you, he's almost never got it. It's like his voice is trying to overcompensate for the strength of his hand. We could re-raise, but I like just calling, because if we hit our card and he's bluffing, he could keep bluffing. Can it calls in position. The turn card is the king of clubs. Can it now has a flush. Got it. Five hundred. For Tehi bets again. Now we have to just call. And now that I think about it, one of the bluffs Fatehi could have had on the flop is an ace high flush draw. And that's a pretty small bet relative to the size of the pot. If he shoves river, I don't know, but for now we're gonna call. I assume. Yes. So 2.7 million in the middle. Can it the effective stack with 1.42 million behind? The river is a three, pairing the board. Holy. And Fatehi quickly shoves. That was so fast. I know he doesn't have a full house. But I'm not convinced he doesn't have a bigger flush. He seemed a little aggro with that all in, too. And I don't know if it's because he doesn't have it or because he's annoyed the board paired. Oh, oh my god. Another big decision for Mustafa. I don't think I can fold. Given the hands we've seen Ali Reza defend with in the big blind, I don't think so either. Can it looking at the pay jumps? He calls all in! Let's see it. Queen I. Fatehi bluffing with Queen Jack! Great call us! Yes! Can it doubles up? Nice hand anyway. With stuff. And the Italian takes the chip lead! Pocket eights for Paul Newey. He's been very quiet at this final table. Newey's my favorite of all Scrooge McDuck's nephews. He's raised it up to 200,000. Where do you think Paul got all that money from? It's almost Shemian's big blind. Queen six of clubs. He calls. to the flop, which brings drama, a set for Newey. Shemian has a flush draw and he's double gutted. See at the river. They are pretty shallow, so it's usually gonna go in on the flop. Shemian has checked. Newey set to continue. Always bet your sets, especially on a board wetter than the sinks in an airport bathroom. What are people doing in there? I don't like to think about it. 285,000. Ola can't fold these draws, and he's probably not going to just call for a huge chunk of his stack. All in. Call. Shoving a call. Newey at risk, but ahead. A six to four favorite. Not a massive favorite. Up to you on it. More flop. Hashtag understatement. You're the favorite. Statistically, no. Swagtistically, yes. I think you're the favorite. No, no. Shemian makes his flush. Three. Knew he needs the board to pair. Seven. Seven from heaven. It's a king. He's out. You got me covered, haven't you? I don't know. I have 2.5 here, I think. Exactly. 
Newey out in fifth. Yep, again, guys. I like you, Paul. What a flop. Cheers. Mustafa. Again, what a flip. Cheers. Cheers. Poor Paul Newey. Not literally. He's still rich AF. I'm going to take your revenge. Shemian with ace 10 on the button raises. 240. Ali Reza Fatehi. Has pocket fives in the small blind. Very reasonable spot for a shove. All is going to be opening wide. Ali Reza's out of position and he's very likely to hate most flops. All in. He shoves. Yes. Can it fold? Action back on Shemian. Now, this is a big shove. 33 big blinds. Which means this is not a snap call. Ola agrees. Surely it's not a call at all with ace 10 off. Peekaboo, who's hiding over there? Who is that? Shemian's really thinking about this, isn't he? Yes. Wow, I am really surprised by that call. I don't think he makes the same call against anyone else. Good luck. Good luck to you. Good luck, guys. Well, it's a flip. For Tehi, the player at risk. Ola must think he's going to have a lot of bad aces and Broadway hands. Ola against uh, Ali Reza. Yeah. Not now, Igor. Let's blow the whistle and start this race. Great start for Shemi, and he pairs his 10 on the flop. That is a bummer for two fives, though. Ali Reza left with two outs. No, oh, no, Igor's on the beers. The turn card. The five. No, the three. Put the five here, please. Right there. Yeah, exactly right there. there. <laughs> He can do it. One time he do it for me. Go, boom. He teach me this. <laughs> <laughs> he teach me this like four years ago. In a 25K. Swag actually sometimes stands for stolen without a gun, oddly. The river is an ace. Thank you. Good game. Good luck. Good. Ali. Thank you, bro. Very nice to meet you. Good luck. It was a Love seeing a good deep run by an amateur. Anyone can do it. Leaving us with the two high roller vets. Pocket five against eight stain. Uh, well done. You did thank well. you, Six. thank you. Blind 6120. Shemian limps in from the button with ace five. Canet does not check his option. He raises with the 10 7. And Shemian calls the raise in position. Let's play a bigger pot. Well, that's a nothing flop. Shemian's still ahead with ace high. Canik continues to show aggression. That's 350,000. I don't think we're going to see Ola call a three bet with ace high too often and then fold the flop right away. He calls. The turn card is a four. Well, both players now have straight draws. Shemian's open-ended. Canet has a gut shot. He needs a five. All the more reason neither of these guys is likely to fold. Canet continuing to demonstrate strength. 875,000. Once again, Shemian calls. The river card. Is a three pairing the board. So ace high was the best hand before the flop, and it's still the best hand after the river. Major brickage on the river. I think a bet here gets snapped off by Ola. I think Canet's going to give it a go. He's not waving the white flag of surrender. Fires out a bluff of 1.95 million. It's actually a pretty great run out to call with ace high, just like he did with Fatehi earlier. White flag, more like white swag. Feel like I'm really getting to know Anna here. Sorry. Shemian thinking this through. 
He heroes. You win. Six, right? Not even. Oh. Really big chip lead for Shemian now. His bad card was an ace. His good card, swag. Nice hand. And Shemian picks up queens. He raises to 350,000. Feel gruesome railing the action now. <laughs> Can it's got sevens? This could be the cooler we were waiting for. Call in. Call. Here we go, all in, and a call, and Shemian is a four to one favorite to win. Mustafa's prediction not looking so hot right now. Good luck, bro. I always make quotes with sevens. <laughs> lucky number, huh? Lucky, lucky. A wise man once said, it is always coming seven. <laughs> a set for Shemian. I have a sweat. For now. Seven for spade. It's okay. <laughs> the turn card. Mm -mm -mm. It's a spade. Mm -mm -mm. The sweat just uh -uh -uh. got sweatier. Can it picks up eight outs? All the spades, bar the deuce, any other card. Shemian is the champ. What a life these guys have. It's gonna be eight of spades. Not so big, not so. It's small. okay. Or queen. You can finish it with queen. Quotes queens. That would be nice, huh? The river. Not a spade. Oh, it's black. It's a seven. Too little, too late. Again, bro. We're heading over to the secondary table where we are on cooler alert. Oh boy. Ivanov opened with fives. Pastor three bet with aces. Decision now on Mateos, who's got queens. That's not going to be good for business. He four bets. Alasmar, our qualifier, has jacks. Wow. He folds. Christopher Frank. All in. Shoves with kings. Oh, come on. Is this a standard deck or just one with all the letters of the alphabet? <laughs> I didn't look before. Seriously? Boy, are you going to be happy and then immediately disappointed. Ivanov has folded its back on Pastor. Yeah, check this out, Johnny Laden. He reshoves. What does Mateos do now? That. Feels bad, man, but I don't think he can fold. <sighs> What a ridiculous hand. Having aces here and having them hold, that's how you become a grand final champion. And is that? Five. So sick. Sicker than Lucille Austere on a Gravitron. <laughs> I don't know. He knows he's losing in at least one spot, but his odds are also pretty sick. I think I have to go. Yeah. Mateos calls! You got aces? Oh. I swear, I swear I fall jacks. I swear. Cool story, bro. Aces versus kings versus queens! Well, none of the three ones, eh? Six sweat for everyone so deep in the tournament. Even aces aren't totally safe. Juan Martin Pastor set to triple up. Christopher Frank likely to be eliminated. The flop. 10-4 deuce. <sighs> the turn card. It's a queen! Oh. I am so, so sorry. Buenos dias, Adrian. And now there's a 90% chance we lose two players. Mateos goes from worst to first, and it's a double KO! Frank out! Ah, <sighs> yes. Pastor out! That really sucks. It's never happened. I swear I pulled a jack. Not now, Hattie. 
Mateos is the new chip leader. And what a horrible beat for the PCA finalist. Welcome back to the Poker Stars European Poker Tour presented by Monte Carlo Casino. Super high roller coverage continues. Hello, my babies. Live from the Monte Carlo Bay Hotel and Resort, the final four players remain. 1.3 million dollars to the eventual winner. Everyone now guaranteed nearly half a million. It's closer to 1.4, actually 1.385. Joe. I now see you took the last hour off, but uh, prize prize money's big. Joe Stapleton, <laughs> Griffin, the pedant <laughs> Benger. The auditor. I saw one. I saw three. I saw a point. One point three. Puh. <laughs> Action back underway. Have lost to two players in this final table already. All in? Oh, I hear it all in. On some of the other tools, they play tools, tours, they play fast and loose with the rules. But here on the EPT, you say all in. It's all in. Anyway, what happened? Did they get called? It was a raise from Mateo to, to 100K and an all in for about 1.2 from our fourth place. Uh, on the leaderboard, Michele, Mi Michele, 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 Vaska Boynikov. You got it. Four players remaining. There's your current chip stacks. Adrian Mateos still crushing, right. still over 100 big blinds. Yeah, did you see how many chips uh, Michaela has there? 1.4. 1.4. Oh, now it's 1.4. <laughs> Hello out there, everyone. Tuning in on Twitch and YouTube. Glad to have you with us. Vaska Boynikov under the gun. 8-7. Suited. Makes it 100K. Blinds 25 and 50 with a 50K big blind ante. Mateos going to defend. Queen Deuce. Suited. King. King. Deuce. Two hearts. That's... Four hearts, count them, for Vaska Boynikov. Yeah, just a great uh, board here for Vaska Boynikov. Situationally, you know, you're the aggressor here, and you flop to flush draw. You should induce a lot of folds from a lot of better hands like jack highs and ten highs and, and a lot of queen highs, but Mateo's willing to continue with just the queen deuce high. Of course. Wait, well, hold uh, on. Well, he's got a pair of twos. There you go. You know, so a little hiccup there for me. Full, full house on the river. Full house, baby doll. Kings full of deuces. It's a seven star hand, I think, if I remember correctly. You know your charts. Mateos, first to act. Gets the value bet. And fold from Mikolai. Mateos. Lots of experience here in Monte Carlo, winning millions upon millions of euros. More like Mate yeah, Boss. There you go. Yeah. Not sure I do this. Not sure if I'm even supposed to limp call this free. Hey. Not gaining so much there. I should trap you and check the account. <laughs> Mateus and Marius Girsa having a little bants. Girsa on the button, King 4 suited. We don't really use banter much in, in the US, huh? It's more of a British thing. Banter. We definitely don't say bants. <laughs> that's, that's for sure, yeah. <laughs> Ace-9 offsuit for Mateos. 
Looks like some aggressive action incoming. Yeah, a nice opportunity to play um, a hand like this aggressively, but hey. Uh... Oscar Boynikov with a very pretty suited Broadway hand. It's just tough because, you know, Mateos is going to be pretty committed to a stack such as that. So even the times you do shove here, Mateos calls with a hand like suited ace or an ace nine, you're, you're losing. So you kind of have to fold king jack suited. But it stings, Joe. Always hurts to fold a hand. Like, this one, I just want to see a flop. Just let me see three. Come on. Love to write, writes in to say, wait, Spraggy is not on the final table. Unsubscribe, lol. Nope, Spraggy did not play the super high roller this year. Still reeling from that five bullet debacle in the Bahamas a few years ago. Half a million dollars, can you believe that? <laughs> I'm always gonna be the, on the outside of this inside joke. <laughs> the only joke is Spraggy's bankroll management. Mateos on the button, 6-3 suited. And another King Jack for Vasko Boynikov. Against the button open, any different here? Alan? I think so. Oh, yeah. Is Mateos going to call? Just kidding. <laughs> Classic Joe. We have our fun. We, <laughs> we have our fun. <laughs> Basket Boynikov, 1.9 million in live tournament earnings. As far as we can tell, only been on the EPT since 2015. He's got a fifth in a 50K event from 2018. His best live cash, to our knowledge. I'm sure that was for, what, just over 100K? And he's held on to that money ever since. 267,000. <laughs> to play this event here today. There's a seven-year plan, that one. Every seven years, he takes that money and keeps on... Well, that was that it. was August 2018. Oh, I thought you said 15. Been on the That's tour well since 2015. Been on the tour since 15. Bajikowski limping in with king-queen offsuit. Gears uh, dominated. Gears! Your flop is jack. Eight, four, two spades. Gears has got a spade. You know what really grinds my gears? What grinds your gears? Uh? Did you have a follow up for that? Or you just no, wanted to no, say. I just wanted, you just wanted to, to, say to drop that, the line. Yeah. Yeah. When Griffin I'll, when bailing I'll out on bits grinds, grinds, like grinds my gears. Uh. <laughs> we don't all map things out. Some of us fly to the seat, seat of our comedy pants. Uh oh. That is a bit of a problem. Yeah, that, for uh, Marius gears up. Gonna look like gin on the turn. No, 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 it is not. And that's gonna create quite a battle for this pot. A gears of war, if you will. Okay, all right. That was a little more complete thought, at least. <laughs> Bojakovsky flicking in a 100K chip. Look how, look how good these guys are. Obviously, not getting away. But wasn't wasn't beating him into the pot. Still no. reluctant. No designs to raise or get out of line here. It's nice to keep the bluffs in from Madziakowski and then get some value when when check two on the river. But um, just want to respond to Unc Uncle Jonesy saying I can do better. I cannot. He but can't. Thank no, you I can. For, yeah, no, I agree. Thank you for coming. I gotta have my my co-commentators back here. He cannot do better. I, <laughs> I'm on his side on this one. This 10 on the river does not affect this actual hand. Does complete some straights. Not gonna affect Bajikovsky's ability to value bet, however. And a quick call from Girsa, who looks like he knows it's over <laughs> before. It's just a shrug call. Mateos looking on, wondering how a pot just happened that he didn't win. Confused. 
Wamboozled, if you will. Love me some Norman Chad. What a fella. What a guy. Was the uh, we had him on the podcast mm, yes. in the last year. Podcast. Yeah, you it's did. I, I think you were yeah, particularly yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, raving about that experience. You thought it was a good it was a good pod. It was really really uh, nice to get to know Norman a little bit better. And I ended up having lunch with him not long after that, and I enjoyed that time very much as well. Do you remember what he ordered? <sighs> yes, thank you for your question. <laughs> See, guys, no one is safe from the thank you for the, for the question. <laughs> not even a friend and coworker. I actually don't remember what he ordered, or else I wouldn't have done that to you. Yeah. So you just... When you don't have the answer, you just spin it into saying something cool. It's really any any anybody's guess. <laughs> uh, looks like uh, you're flying by the seat of your pants now. I really like the Bitcoin fountain one, by the way. Oh, thanks, buddy. Yeah, that one's good. I got a couple more loaded up, but I don't want to. I don't want to burn through them too no, fast. No, no, I'm, no, I'm no. Here One a day, you know the rule. I mean, I wrote nine of them, which is more than I need. But some of them, <laughs> some of them are not good. <laughs> yeah, well, it's important to also write bad ones so you can compare the good ones to it. You got to cleanse the palate. Good, yeah. yeah. Bajakovsky opening things up. King, queen suited. Pocket tens for Gearsa. Front row. Gears. Well, there's a 10. And interestingly, seeing just the call from Gears, you'd think that maybe sometimes a three bit would be mixed in, but you have to consider the stack size here. You have to consider the ICM implications of, of um, you know, the short stack in the big blind. You don't necessarily just want to get in 35 uh, plus big blinds here. Mm -hmm. You're very under rep when you just flat the tens here. I definitely like it from Gears. I think this is a very strong, um, passive way to play. Such a premium four-handed. I think, yeah, this is going to have to play as a check back, even though you do want to protect against hands like King Queen, because then something like that will happen. <sighs> well, this board wasn't a wasn't a delight for tens to begin with, but. Certainly. But not the worst board facing a check from the aggressor. Nope. You know, one that you're just like, okay, I think I'm probably good a lot of the time here, but let's uh, let's see a seven of diamonds on the turn. Let's check it through and see if we can get value from a nine later. Maybe a king nine suited opened from your opponent. But with that queen, you're thinking, oh, gosh. And you can feel the way how hard um, Gearsa checked that turn, thinking, well, if I was ahead on the flop, I'm... Not going to be ahead most of the time on this particular turn card. Sure, you're still ahead of sevens and sixes. But, you know, all the king, queen, queen, jack, queen, tens. Are you guys writing this down? Tens is ahead of sixes and sevens. <laughs> Sometimes I have to remind myself of stuff like that. Those hands are out there. You have to consider them. Bonjakowski, last chance. It's a value bet. Yeah, and, and, and I wouldn't expect to see a very big bet if we do see a value bet, but it is just going to play as a check. Um, you know, you're just chopping with the queens anyway, is bad Ziakowski. King, queen. Checking it down. King, queen, good. Two tens into the muck. Gearsa with a back-to-back -back disappointments. Yeah, it might seem like a missed bet opportunity, but I think that's being a bit results-oriented based on the particular hand that Gearsa had. Um, you know, ha happened to have only one of two hands that was sort of a weaker value hand that might call, but I don't even know if Gearsa would call there with the tens. Um, wouldn't expect necessarily um, Makita to, to, to bluff there too often. <coughs> Griffin, uh, well, we have a second in between hands here. Mm. You were kind of... Now, here in Monte Carlo, 2022, as you guys can see, yeah. live. We're back. Uh, free smoothies yes. outside the venue. Pretty cool. Not a lot of free stuff no, in Monaco. It's nice. And pancakes over there. 
And pa- free pancakes? They're free or? pancakes. You didn't know that. No. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's probably for the best. Yeah, no, I shouldn't have told you. I don't know if you, you saw my face on the uh, opening link, but... I thought you looked great. All of my chins were, <laughs> were there. Anyway, this smoothie that you got for me, Griffin... I just want to make sure that this stuff floating in the bottom is like not cigarette ash, and it's some sort of healthy. Okay, so it is thing. my cigarette ash. Okay, but got listen, it. I, they yeah. were running out of cups. <laughs> no, I will say that that uh, my girlfriend remarked on the same thing. What is this black stuff at okay. the bottom? So I think it's just seeds. It's intentional. Okay, great. It's in- intentional seeds. Yes, yes. And she got that exact same smoothie as well. So maybe it, maybe it's particularly in the wellness smoothie. I could use some wellness. Blind on blind right, battle here, on. as I. Bottoms up. These, Can I see this, it? This cigarette, these cigarette butts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think they're Coffee just grounds. seeds from the, okay. I don't know, one of the many fruits in that fruit smoothie. <laughs> That's definitely cigarette. <laughs> I can hear the sound of the chewing. It's very polite of you. What is it? Yeah, not two. That was a mistake. <laughs> All right, here we go. To the flop. Ace, jack, eight, two clubs. King high. Looking pretty good. Goes check, check. Nine on the turn. A draw develops for Bajakovsky. Zizzo Monk says probably chia seeds. That sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. The river is a seven, so Bajakovsky hits one of his many outs. Houston. And they check it down again. What's with these guys, huh? They want to play or what? Yeah. Rajakowski going to pick up quite literally the smallest pot possible. Really loving this new set, by the way. Hats off to you, designers, builders, assemblers. Dreamers of dreams. Really cool stuff. You know, they think playing cards came from this part of the world to begin with. At least the modern deck. Oh, yeah? The kings and queens and all that, yeah. The birth of the suicide king. Under something? King, queen, suited, or queen, as we like to call it. Some, nobody calls it that but me. Raise and take it. Sotka. Goran asks, can three guys make a deal in this stage of tournament? Yes, they can. I mean, well, three can. Four can, since there's four players left. Yeah, they can't make, um, I mean, in my in my experience... That'd be fun. Tables. You can't yeah. three people make a deal without one. It can't There's be like a bullying right. situation. <laughs> like, you know, when you were a kid and like you first start under, start understanding social dynamics, it'd be like you and three other friends, but there was like the one that was like the least cool. Maybe you'd bully him a bit, even though you probably Are you shouldn't. asking me if I have experience with bullying? Because <laughs> you know that I do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was, so, a, no, you I can't was, a, do I was that. a huge bully. Yeah, yeah, you can't do that. You can't, you can't. You know, isolate one person that you're like, you're not as cool as us, and the, just make a deal without them. The good news is the players at this level really don't really make a lot of deals. No, and they're all kind of like insufferably nice to each other. Like, you, were, you weren't here towards the last respect. level. Respect. They respect they, each it, other. The respect is just, it oozes out of their pores. Yeah. One of them needed to go to the bathroom 10 minutes before the break, and they they waited. What, That's, did, you, what did you guys do? Um, I... <laughs> It's a really good question. I think we just talked about how just use a lot of, you know, adjectives describing how gracious and patient and yeah, that's cool. understanding a small community, the super high roller circuit, yeah. and kind of look out for each other. That kind of, you know, checking what? off the, the boxes. If you wanted to be able to, you know, if you wanted to not 
be able to go to the bathroom whenever you need it. You pick a real job. You don't become a professional poker player. Yeah, yeah. Go work the assembly line at the Toyota factory. Mm -hmm. Bowska Bornikov jams over the top of the open from Mateos, blind on blind. It gets through. Uncle Jonesy asks, who's special guest? Ah, uh, that would be if we like brought in like a commentator who wasn't a part of the team or, yeah. you know, just someone that's not usually here. They would be the special guest. Thank you for your question. AJK asks, how many got paid of the 42 players? Only FT gets paid. Not even. EPT final tables are eight-handed, and only six players got paid in this case. They played down to the money last night, picked things up six-handed today. Adrian Mateos, arguably the best player in the world, is the chip leader in this event, opening this pot from the button. Ace-queen offsuit, pocket fours. For Vaska Boynikov, the shortest stack. It's going in, baby. It is a lot of chips. It's close to 30 big blinds. But you don't really have any other move other than to shove here. You don't want a three bet call. You certainly don't want a flat. So Vaska Boynikov really is just thinking, do I want my tournament life to be on these this small pair that should get a lot of folds? from this button open range for Mateos, so it should be raising 80 plus percent of hands. But Mateos could wake up with a hand. Uh, you know, the big blind, Mikita could wake up with a hand. So makes a very, oh, wow. very tight fold. And I think that, and look at this. I think oh, that has to boy. do, yeah, the, the fold has to do with having as many chips as Vaska Boynikov had there. Um, you know, had he had you 1 million, 1.2 million in there for 30 bigs. And it's just, just a lot of chips. Yeah. And that's why we see the disciplined uh, fold and Makita just. Ooh. Ooh, Makita walking down ooh, the street. Ooh, Makita. Ooh, Makita walking down the street. Top pair for Makita. A rare situation where we see Adrian Mateos out flopped. I think. Every poker player out there can relate to this particular situation. Raising ace queen, missing the flop. Watch how Adrian Mateos plays this hand. Now, granted, you're not going to be four handed in a super high roller, probably, when this happens to you. But I mean, dream your dreams. There's dreamers still something, of dreamers. There's still something <laughs> to be learned here when you see how Adrian, Adrian, Buenos Dias, plays this hand. Of course, you could also watch Mikita Bajakovsky play this hand. Another crusher. High roller reg. And Mateos calls the raise yeah, gets, from Bajakovsky. Turn is a nine of clubs. Gets Mateos to call with not just the worst hand, but a particular hand that has very little equity against Ace Jack. An ace would not be good for Mateos. Only a queen would vault him ahead of Makita. Now a little more outs on the turn. Be interesting to see how. Badziakovsky plays this. He is going to offer the free Ooh. card to Mateos. And what's so interesting, uh, Joe, is right before the end of the last level, there was a very, very interesting hand that went on between these two blind on blind where Badziakovsky actually sort of min bet the river and induced a four high raise from Mateos over 5x and Badzikowski mm, wow. quite quickly called it off the board was ace ace king 7 10 Badzikowski had 10 5 for just third pair on the board and 
bet and called on the river. So there's a lot of interesting dynamics, not just going on at this final table and in that hand in particular between these two, but, you know, over the course of their career against each other, like we spoke about, it is a small community in the Super High Rollers. These two have a lot of experience playing against each other. There are things and nuances going on between these guys that we can't possibly understand based off countless hands playing for literally millions of dollars. So um, we see a really quite a big bet from Mateos here. Um, and, you know, this is something that Batsyukovsky kind of induced by doing the check raise and this check call. Yeah, so this, is, this is history repeating what, itself. Yeah, Pretty cool here. Is, yeah. River is a six, so Mateos officially cannot win the hand at showdown. It'll be pretty tough to get a fold, but not impossible. And you can see how much the stakes of this hand are different than the one that happened before the end of the last break. The hand strength of Makita is so much bigger with this ace-jack, but it's so much more difficult to call an all-in here for pot than it is, you know, 270,000 chip raise, um, like in the 10-5-4-3 hand that we, we saw, you know, about 40 minutes ago. And if anyone is willing to pull the trigger yeah. and put immense ICM pressure on Badziakowski, it is, you know, Adrian Mateos, but <laughs> waves the white so flag. Close. Yeah. They check it down, and Ace Jack is going to get the pot shipped that away. Badziakowski up to 2.775 million now. Could have gone either way there. Oh, 2.8 million. Fine. And you can see a bit of the relief in Mikita having not had yeah. to face that all in on the river because, you know, as, as strong a hand as Ace Jack is, it's it's not um, beating the hands that Mateos would be representing by going all in. Mateos is representing, you know, straights that would have floated the flop and called the and see, seen that nine on the turn, eight X, which would have been trips on the flop. Um, so Makita, I think, you know, could have very well been prepared to make that big call against someone he has a, you know, very, very complex dynamic with, but, you know, a bit relieved that he didn't have to and now sits uh, second in chips, uh, nearly three million. I'm not even playing and I'm relieved. <laughs> I don't even want to there see someone in that spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No matter what happens, it's awkward. Like, if Adrian gets snapped off there, I'm just like, oh, it's so awkward. Awkward. You ever think that sometimes? Yeah, awkward, yeah, all the time. No, I, in poker, though. Yeah, sometimes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Blind on blind, Bezikowski, Gearsa. Pair of sixes for Makita. Ace, king, six, two hearts. It's my first time having YouTube chat open. Oh, yeah? How is it? And uh, I'll say that I used to think that uh, Twitch chat uh, in general was kind of dumb. Mm -hmm. Like the intelligence <laughs> level low. Oh, I know. I know this but let one. me tell you, compared to YouTube, you guys on Twitch are rocket scientists. <laughs> I just remembered a, a time that I did the awkward thing, and I said it out loud at a poker table. Really? Yeah. It was uh, EPT Berlin High Roller, which was one of the first high rollers I, I properly played that I happened to win back in 2013. But I, the final two or three tables, I was, I was sitting beside Scott Seaver, and he was on my right. And he did something nice for me. He, like, I think he, I, I ordered some, something to eat or, like, a drink, and I didn't have money for a tip, so he, like, paid for the tip for me. Mm -hmm. And then the very next hand, he, like, raised, raised, and I just, like, I did not, I had a horrible hand, and I just thought this was such a metagame moment to, like, re-raise light, but it was, like, really bad. It Because like he just did something nice to you. Because he just did something nice to me, yeah. So I re-raised something, like, I think it was something, like, queen three suited or, like, really bad. Such a jerk. And we ended up getting to the river, and he had king, queen suited, and I think I might have river to three. And I just raked in this pawn after he did something really nice for me. And I just was, like, raking it in, I was just, like, turned him, like, Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty awkward. Yeah. Trip tens for Mateos here. Total whiff for Vaska Bonikov. Looks like he is going to continue. Mm -hmm. 
and kind of, you know, going to be really annoying facing a check raise for Vas Kabornikov here. But you do have the kind of hand that is so easy to fold, which is quite nice. You know, when you're sitting there with, you know, a pocket pair or a decent ace high, you're, you're thinking, well, this is nonsense. I need to, I need to continue, you know, maybe even shove some of the pairs. But luckily, sort of the bottom of his range there with Queen Jack off and able to get away. Did not run into the buzzsaw. Adrian at it again. Flopping huge. Huge. Flopping huge. I, I don't think you guys on YouTube are understanding that I was I was saying you're much worse than Twitch. Not better. I'm, I yeah. hope I made that clear now. Yeah, like was rocket scientists before? are smart. Yeah. Yeah. You're, it's kind of, it's the cliche of what like smart, like they're smart, like they're smart, you're not smart. Um, that's kind of what you're saying, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. You, you get it. Yeah. Just the confidence with which people are saying... What, sh what you should do in a hand? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know what? That's the fun thing about poker, is that, that humorous is hard to find in, in the aspects of other people's <laughs> lives. You know? I think it's very quite cathartic for people to just be like, oh, well, I know exactly what you should do here. Because I've played poker. You got, hey, you got to throw the knuckler here, right? It's any sport, right? Yeah, People yeah, are just yeah, saying, yeah. like, look, you got to you gotta, you gotta bring in... Uh, you it's gotta a one-two it's it's one count. You got to bring in the <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Pre-flop aggression here. Bajakovsky opening 10-9 suited, a.k.a. the Grafton. And uh, for those unfamiliar, like, you idiots on YouTube, no kidding. <laughs> the 10-9 suited, we have a rule here. At, uh, at Poker Stars TV. You want to tell them about the Grafton, in case they're not aware? You can't fold 10 9 suited. You can't fold 10 9 suited. So Makita has cursed himself, um, destined to fall and crash and burn, finish in fourth, because he folded the 10 9 suited. Then be the rules. I'll just say in general to anyone watching at home, whatever um, Edgar Mateos does in the hand, is what you're supposed to do in yeah. the hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so, or Makita. Yeah, pretty much. just don't. Like, and probably the other two. So what you should do is <laughs> figure out a way to explain why what they did is correct. And you're yeah. going to be right way more often. You know, I just realized something. My my, my parents wanted the, the link to the, the stream this week. Yeah. And normally George and I, Darlene. <laughs> George and Darlene, yeah. And normally I give them the, the Twitch one, but, but today for the first time I actually gave them the YouTube one. So mom oh, so and dad. Is your mom in here <laughs> yeah, being real mom dumb? And, yeah, mom and dad, if, <laughs> if you're reading the chat um, and you happen to be on YouTube, then I'm sorry, you're, you're one of them. You guys are also, you know, you're not as, <laughs> not as you're not rocket scientists. I'm so sorry, like Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> Benger, but I, I said what I said. <laughs> yeah. It's ca it's canon. It's Poker Stars canon. We're kidding, YouTube. We love you. You're just you know, you're not as smart as Twitch. <laughs> I'd like to give a shout out to Nicholas Pruden. A second shout out, because he just said I'm an idiot from YouTube. Thanks for the shout out. And I'm going to shout out you, thanking us for the shout out. Hey, Nikki. Welcome. Happy to have you. Happy to have you all. Did you know the PSPC coming back? Yes. Back to the Caribbean? Yes, very exciting. PSPC Part 2. This is going to be one of those sequels. And you know what? Better than the original. And you know what, uh, Joe? You guys at PokerStars love giving away those those PSPC Platinum Passes. I, I mean, even YouTubers can get I handed some. someone a Platinum Pass last night at no the way. Players Party. Yeah, it's pretty oh cool. Oh, my God. Yep. That's wicked. What did he do? Was it a dance off? Uh, he had won it a long time ago, oh, okay. and like I just physically. So it wasn't like a yeah. I didn't just like have one in my pocket. <laughs> I just figured they'd give them to you, and it's just like no. So like any, great anytime I'm around one of them, I'm like I want nothing to do with this. <laughs> like I like making people happy, and I like being the one to hand it to them. But as yeah. far as like deciding who gets them, I yeah. like it's too much power. Don't no. I, don't bother me. Is the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the people out there, if they think I have any say whatsoever, it's, my life is going to become a nightmare. Although I will say it would be fun to do a, like, uh, sort of make Stapes laugh <laughs> thing, you know? <laughs> I'm, an like, e I'm an easy laugh, though. I'd be giving away hundreds of the things. Yeah. But then the field's so much bigger. It's, you know, it's, it's everybody wins.
No action for Adrian with aces moments ago. Disgusted. Poskoponikov out. Jason Norline says, you guys probably wouldn't be commentating the game, but playing if you were smart. I mean... Griffin, you've only won how many millions of dollars playing <laughs> poker? I don't know. Combined between live and online? How many times have you won eight million seven? dollars in one tournament? Twice. Only twice? Only twice, yeah. Almost three but times, I'm, right? I'm, but I'm going for the turkey. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, if you're any good at poker, you probably wouldn't be here. That reminds me, I haven't been watching the McGruber TV show. Ridiculous. Kind I forgot it was even out. I know. Maybe we should watch it together. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. you come down to the Best Western? Yeah, I would. Okay. For some McGruber. Action folds around to Mateos. 75 clubs. James Hardigan just stopped by, making sure that the... Uh, he heard us making plans to watch TV. <laughs> yeah, he was like, yeah, yeah. hey guys, hey, what's up? Making sure I, like the, I like TV. You know, things are under control with the inmates running the asylum. Oh, domination situation, 8-5 versus 7-5. One, two, three, four clubs and a pair of sevens. Buenos dias, Adrian. Yeah, but uh, uh, a board that, um, you know, no, Oscar no, no, no. is not going to hate. You are open-ended to the nets. Nobody ever makes open-enders. It's always a pair. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. You always make a pair. Hmm. I'm thinking a six on the turn. And that turn card is a six. You did mention something about pairs, and he technically has a pair of sixes I now. I literally called the pair, Griffin. Did you say six? Yes. Oh, my God. And you guys ask why he's in the booth. It's because he's a prophet. It wouldn't be fair if he played. Correct. I'm sorry I did that to uh, Fauske Boynikoff, but I would, I've, li I've literally never seen an open-end straight come in that in would all be a pretty, my years. That would be a pretty brutal curse if you just... Like, if you knew the future, you knew what was going to come, but you always lost. I still can't win. Yeah. <laughs> that's more, like that's, that's more or less that true. That is your story. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know you're just not going to, yeah. But Taos makes a bet. Ain't going to get a call from eight high. No resistance. Gold medal panda asks, when did it change from domination nation to domination situation? Yeah, we like a domination situation now. Yeah. Michaela, 18 big ones, smackaroos. Does that look like a Michaela to you? Does that look like a 19-year-old spring breaker okay, with a tramp stamp? Okay, am I saying stamp? it wrong? Mikolai. Uh, Mikolai. Mikolai. <laughs> the tramp stamp. <laughs> That's fair. Mikolai, yes. Mikolai. Sammy99 says, so boring. Sammy, you banned. Thank you for your comment. <laughs> AK asks, is this actually live? It is not, but you'll have no, no clue how hard it was to pull this off. <laughs> Reading that question from you and this also not being live. <laughs> I can't even explain to you how we did it. Another blind on blind. Olymp and a check. And a seven and a five. See, we're technically in the past, but we're in your future's present. Figure that out. Sure. Say it one more time. <laughs> no, no, I was talking <laughs> out of my... <laughs> Ace of clubs on the turn does put a wheel draw out there for Bajakowski. When will then be now, asks Uncle Jonesy. 
When will then be now? Well, then is now. Correct. Um, but you are also 30 minutes from here, but also in our present. <laughs> Oscar Bonikov giving a great price for Bajakovsky to see a river card. Bet the minimum in oh! that river. Straightenizes. I mean, how unlucky is that? You got two pair. You're just so, there's what only three, right? You know the expression wheeling and dealing. I call that dealing and wheeling. Dealing and wheeling. What? Why did you say it like that? Like what? Like you said, it's wheeling. It's just wheeling. It's not wheel. No, no, no. Wheel. Wheel. No, no, wheel. What are you saying? I'm saying wheel. What am I wheeling. saying? Wheel. You're saying wheel. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. That's known as the wheel. And Bajakovsky just calls the value cut from Vaska Boynikov. And moves closer. Running hot, I would say. <laughs> Closer to Mateos. And Vaska Barnikov in big trouble now. Ten big blinds. A lot of folks questioning the just call. I'm not a I'm not a genius, well, but I will say there was a flush out there. Yeah, it was a big it was a big bet. Um you know, maybe in this context it would have been better served to find a raise, but it's also not, I can understand. You know, the, okay, the question becomes, we can see that the opponent had two pair, there are sevens and fives. Now, facing a raise, if you decide to raise there with the four dues, are you always getting a call from the seven five? Not necessarily. So you know, not sometimes always. it's just better to just call there because you, you know, beat some of the value, beat all the bluffs, and then, you know, you're not, just folding out hands, they're going to fold a raise. And there were uh, other straights out there too, right? There was a higher straight. There yeah. was some sort of 6-5 situation, I think, right? Well, here we have an ace-on-ace -ace situation. Girsa out-kicked. Girsa with Arguably the most to lose right now. Uh, Requiem asking an interesting question about why they're even wearing the mask anymore. Well, I would also say that, you know, I think it's something that maybe getting used to a little bit on the circuit, hiding your face and expression. So there's, a, there's also that it's, to consider, I think. It is a rule here in the venue. Mm -hmm. But I think over the, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we see it trending more in the next few years. I think people are getting used to it at the table. Was a bet and a call on that flop. The turn's a five. So this pot will chop occasionally. What are the cards for a chop, Joe? Just for the YouTubers. Everything bigger than a jack. Yeah. Well said, actually, including an ace. Damn, you're good. Actually, didn't didn't realize I was including an ace. Oh, did you? That was just a happy accident. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> All your best work is often that. Correct. Well, what about a five, says close enough. How do you ban people? My, my original answer, I'm going to say, is close enough. <laughs> close enough. I wasn't wrong by saying everything bigger than a jack. I just wasn't inclusive. Oh, of course. Of course. Come on. All right, everyone who said five is getting banned. How do I do this? Yeah. How do I just, is there a way I can just, um, no, especially the smart ass on YouTube, look at the shift end. ban and just do 20 or 30 <laughs> at a time? Both players are the full house. Are you going to do it? Hmm? What? Dun, 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 dun. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. for sure. Mateus slapping out a stack. 
Stack Slab. You're sick. Just calls. Lucky. And this pot will end in a <laughs> chop. And you know what they say, Griff? Everyone, Everyone loves, loves a chop pot. pot. A little easier in person. Yeah, it was really good. How much was the fucking river? Like, not too much, right? Nope. They seem like they love it. Oh, yeah. I'm seeing tens. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing a couple of nines. People want to get banned. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say you get, we're not in vision for, for you guys at home, but we we totally looked at each other and really, you know, we, we were in it there. You know, we kind of had a... It was kind of like when uh, Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga yeah, sang yeah, exactly. at yeah. the uh, Grammys. Or the Academy Awards. Yeah, whatever it was. But there was a moment. In the chop pot and chopping pots. <laughs> A chopping <laughs> pot to lay. Chopping the pots right now. Someone asking a very smart question on Twitch. I think you're in the wrong place, pal. 150. Wonder what is Check Ray's bluffing here in big blind shoes? A7? Calm, you bet. Calm, calm, calm down. <laughs> Just calm down. Bring, bring it, bring it, bring yeah, it to upswing. This, Take it this, to upswing yeah, or something. We don't. X yeah, we dash don't. R stuff. We're not. Yeah. You know, we're not rocket scientists over here. What do you think? We're computers. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I've never thought you were a computer, but <laughs> you said <laughs> never that. Never even come close. <laughs> now that you said that, I'm starting to think you're There's something going on. One of my favorite Scottish phrases is "no danger." No danger? No danger. Did like, there's no it? danger I would ever think you're a computer stitch. <laughs> <laughs> no danger. Ace Jack suited for Bajakovsky. I like the, I love the one James told me about today. Was it a Pol the Polish expression? Not my circus, not my monkeys? Yeah. Yeah. That one's great. I will be using that. I think that exists in many cultures but yes yeah, so the first person was, was a was a pole polish co-worker <laughs> oh my goodness this is going to be unfortunate for someone well ooh, baby and you can see how short vaskaboynikov is and, and you're not super thrilled with queen, queen jack you don't have fold equity here for nine big blinds with the with the raise and the call um you know you're often going to have Kind of worse queens and jacks sometimes against the value hands so you, you do kind of have to continue against the min raise try to flop some equity but you're not you're not thrilled it's not just a slam dunk oh i'll just squeeze shove here and maybe get two folds you're too short is there any um wow look at this flop eight nine five i think it was two spades there it is um Vaska Boynikov looks visibly not thrilled with his hand. Does that matter at all? I know that poker faces and some we talk might, about that much. Yeah, but might be forced to go all in here. You look at the pot size, 350,000. You just have basically a stack to pot ratio of one to one. If you're calling this preflop yep. and seeing this three ways, you might have to consider just sort of front shoving, but does go for the check. Um, meanwhile, Badziakovsky thrilled by this board with the nut flush uh -huh. draw. And two overs. Yeah, going to be happy to and bet and hand. get it in with, with Vaskaboynikov. But could also play um, as a tricky check sometimes. You don't want to necessarily uh, bloat the plot against Adrian. We'll see. And goes for the small bet. No free card for Vaskaboynikov. And you, you can see how so much more play is created by these small bet sizings that we see. I mean, you know, we were looking at this board. We thought, okay, well, Vasko Boynikov should maybe consider shoving for this pot size um, because, um, you know, you have the gut shot and the two overs. Um, but now with this 75,000 chip bet, I mean, 
would you consider maybe calling there for the 75? But no, we're going to see a quick fold. Um, you want to hold on to that, you know, seven, eight big blinds. And I don't blame um, Mikelai. There you go. Yes. Not Michaela. No. Tails checks on the three of hearts turn. Both these players taking the passive route. River is a five. So a couple of bricks. Yeah, and Mateos, Mateos isn't necessarily calling on the flop because he thinks he has the best hand a lot of the time. It's more about the implied odds, the backdoor opportunities with ace-10 of clubs. The bet was just 75 and 330. Okay. So um, ace-jack is going to take this one. And Nikita yeah, yeah. keeps on storming um, all the way up now to, I believe, 3.5, yeah, 3.6 million. 3.6, you got it, Griff. 70 bigs for Bajakovsky. Mateos still out in front with 94 big blinds. Girsa with 35 Why and Vaska Boynikov just seven big blinds. Bajakovsky. Three, six. A little lower, 3.6. Very healthy stack for this stage of the tournament. And, uh, can't help but think back to the incredible ace king fold for about 26 big blinds just forehanded by Makita. Certainly what? knows the result. Oh, you missed that. What? Oh my gosh. Oh, you missed that. When was that? When was that? That was um, about halfway through the, the last level, or maybe early in the last level. Makita raised the button on 27 big blinds with ace king. Uh, Girsa, three bet from the small blind with ace 10. And Mateos cold four bet with pocket kings in the big blind to 560. Makita had 1.1 million total at, you know, 40k big blind, and used so many time bank chips that we didn't even have a bloody graphic for it. Oh wow! He was went through I think eight or nine, maybe even as many as ten um, of these time bank chips. We only had a graphic for six, so we're gonna we're gonna figure that out for next time. <laughs> and um, Makita eventually folded. Uh, correctly, and now finds himself, you know, still forehanded and a very comfortable 75 big blind stack. So, pretty remarkable bullet dodge. From That's talented. Impressive, yeah. yeah. The rest of us mere mortals just shrug, go broke there. Yeah. So the the main consideration, as we spoke about, as it was happening for the the, the 20 minutes he was in the tank, because there was a lot. I mean, for, 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 you know, a, time, a timing situation like that, it was actually quite exciting to see the, um, the wheels turn for Makita. But there was an ICM consideration as, um, you know, Mikolai. Wow, I'm, I'm really struggling with that one. Mikolai was quite short stacked at the time, so it was kind of an ICM thing too, right? Let me help you out with Mikolai. Okay, Mikolai. It's like, Mikolai. It's like an Eastern European version of Mickey. Okay. Miki. Mikolai, yeah. Did not get a peek at Matanz's second card in this hand. Over on the flop. Did you guys know out there in the world that me and James and all the fine people that work on the Poker in the Ears podcast. Won an award for podcast of the year from the World Podcast Association. No, from the Global Poker Awards. You'll never let us forget it. For at least the next until someone else dethrones us. Yes, we're going to be banging that this drum. drum. Mm. We got a good time. We're on top of it every week. Vaskapoy and Akov all in. No. It's going to get through. We're going back to uh, plugging the podcast. John Hamm's been on. Aaron the Sorkin. I think it's yeah, always these are, yeah, it's open, open with the, the, the heavy headers. Phil yes. Halmuth was on, and I got him to unblock me from Twitter, oh, yeah. which he may have blocked me again since then. 
Because he's, I think he's on a bit of a spree. Kind of relief. I guess only like green spots or something. Doesn't he look like an Eastern European and Shannon Shore? He does look like Shannon Shore. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. You know, there's one rule of bad lookalike stars. It can't be anyone else in poker. But yeah, okay. So James told me about this rule too. Yeah. Why, who who makes these rules? It's just the rule. I don't know. It's like who's who decides a royal flush is the top hand. Somebody. I mean, Doctor Royal. Doctor <laughs> Royal. <laughs> Arthur Poker. <laughs> Dr. Royal Flushing. Wojciechowski, FTA, first to act, eight, seven of spades. Anyway, Aaron Sorkin, John Hamm, Helmuth. Looks like Mateos is putting Oscar Buenikov all in. Yes, Utkarsh, the podcast is available on Spotify. Is that a call? It was. And ahead is Basket Boynikov. And interesting to see the 8 7 suited fold. And I think that was particularly about this um, clash that, you know, Makita wanted, was, hope, was hoping would be created and, uh, and is here. Basket Boynikov is ahead, but is at risk. Could potentially go out in fourth place here. And it's a jack high flop, not looking good for Mikolai. Gonna need a king and only a king. Or some tricky back, back doors Ooh, like in good. eight, nine, or ten. A queen on the turn. Very tricky. Not a back door. Ace on the turn. Has Vaska Boynikov down to one last street to save his tournament life. Any kings about? No kings about. Five on the river. Vaska Boynikov, Mikolai, eliminated in fourth place. Are we getting folks to 30 minutes? Sinking 300? Is that the rule? Yeah. Just when I started to get his name right, Mikolai. <laughs> We do a short Heading to the rail, yeah, I think played a pretty really great amazing, final like table. Minutes, Didn't have a lot of opportunities yeah, to get much going, um, but survived as long as he could to take down the very impressive 468,610 euros here in Monaco. Pretty cool payday. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we are now threads up, three-handed. Everybody now guaranteed over 600,000 euros. Who is blind? He's single big blind. The big blind just busted. So All those euros could it? buy a lot of churros. I love churros. that as much, I do love churros, but as much poker as these folks have played, there's still a debate. Where's the button? How does this work? Nobody, oh, yeah, nobody yeah, knows. Yeah. It doesn't matter <laughs> how long you've been doing this. Your guess is as good as mine. Let's just put it over here. Yeah. Let's just, <laughs> let's just spin the wheel. Gears opening pocket tens. Mikita. Yeah, I think Mikita defending. having sort of, you know, pretty good defending hand happens to be up against an absolute monster. And, ooh, disaster for Mikita just in the context of the actual board texture, because it is, I think, a texture that Makita's gonna have to continue on, whether as, you know, a check call or a check raise. But very interestingly, Gears just checks back, and that might very Oof. well create an opportunity for Makita to start taking aggressive action. The Jack isn't a great card for Makita. I think Makita would have preferred to see something like, of course, a seven, but, you know, it's a tough card to sort of bluff. Sure, you'll fold out maybe something like ace five of clubs, but you know your opponent is going to pick up better draws than you a lot of the time. You're going to hit. A, they're going to hit a jack sometimes with ace jack. But Makita does take the bait and bets quite large into this 250k pot, 175,000 buckaroos. People still use the term semi bluff. Is that still a is that still a thing? It's still a thing, but he's not semi-bluffing. He's just bluffing. Just bluffing. Semi-bluffing would be, you know... You're not uh, bluffing you an open-ender here? This is not a semi-bluff? 
Sorry. Semi bluff. Yeah, did semi bluff. With a heart yeah. draw on the up and yeah, down. Yeah, no, you're right. It is a okay. semi bluff. Yeah. Sorry. Jeez, I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta tear up. No, 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 I gotta no, no. shred you're right, you're right, my you're entire. Right, you're right. Semi bluff is fine. <laughs> Rivers of Jack, gears up, fills up. Gears. Now this would be a bluff. No, this is a semi bluff. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, this would be a bluff. Bajakowski, not going to do it. I think if you're gear set, you, you can't be too careful. You got to just check back here. You can't be, you can't be well, all will. Yeah, I mean, the problem nilly. is, you know, not only are you losing to quad jacks yeah. and jack 10 and jack 6 yeah. and jack 4. That's a lot of hands. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's you know, more I, than I, I thought. I, didn't I, only, count, I was only even thinking of yeah, quad jacks. I didn't, I didn't count, but that was at least... What eight nine? Then 10 there's hands. both combinations of the All other the two. Jacks. I mean, that's like thirty hands. Yeah, the fact that he's betting here is shocking. It's really um, and appalling. The how thin these people gutsy. will value bet. Yeah, it's just guts. Can we do a short break? Can we do a short break? It's a fold. It looks like the what players. You, th you think you're running the show over here, Gears? Well, we just talked about this about how hey. Take a five minutes break. Yeah, they're gonna take a five minute break. Look, it's it's a hard day's work. Uh, the production just let me know that we, yeah, okay, so we do what they say, so. <laughs> <laughs> they get their yeah, break. We just, okay. And uh, super aren't high rollers. Change the clock to 30 minutes at three handed? Yeah, or so it's, it says. I think that, I think oh, this is uh, interesting. Oh. They want to speed things up a little bit. Let's yeah. Go. Okay, I to put time on now, five minutes, okay? I think everyone wants to go play the main event, right? Maybe. No, I, I think the, I think these super high rollers often will will register on day two. I don't think they're clamoring to 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 get in the you know pre dinner levels for the main event after playing for 1.5 million. Um, I think it would be more just it would take a long time at the normal levels. Maybe I don't know. All right, well. The players are going to take a five minute break. Let's take a look at the chip counts before we do that. Marius Girsa. Just over 30 big blinds. Mikita Bajakovsky, 52 big blinds. Adrian Mateos has been the chip leader the entire day. Hasn't really put a foot wrong. Still has 90 big blinds, 5.4 million in chips. And Foska Barnikov just eliminated in fourth for 468,000. Laszlo went out just before that. Kent went out early today. And here is what they are playing for. Obviously, we saw the payouts for Kent, Laszlo, and Mikolai. Everyone now guaranteed over 600,000 euros. The runner-up getting nearly a million, but it's 1.4. We're going to round up because Griffin likes ah. that. 1.4 for the winner. So the players are going to take a quick five-minute break. Don't go anywhere. We're going to show you a recent interview from Poker in the Ears. More from EPT Monte Carlo in just a few minutes. Now I'm living for a big mission of making poker popular and entertaining people. We are thrilled to have him on Poker in the Air today. Masato Yokosawa, welcome to the podcast. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Masato Yokosawa. I'm really glad to be here. We're really glad for you to be here. I don't think that... <laughs> um, James and I both, we did not realize you're a very famous poker blogger. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> we would like to know, me, I specifically, because I would like to be a famous poker vlogger. How <laughs> did you do this? Um, actually, I'm not a poker YouTuber, I guess. Like, I make video not only for poker. Like, I'm my video is kind of like entertaining a video. So it's not only for gambling and poker. So I, I think majority of my subscriber doesn't know how to play poker, I guess. So yeah, I think, yeah, if you want to be a famous uh, YouTuber, so uh, maybe you have to try, uh, you know, 
everything. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he's basically saying, Joe, it's time to move on from poker, dude. Yeah. Try, he, <laughs> what he's saying is try being talented. Yeah, that, that too. <laughs> that too. We don't see a lot of Japanese poker players, uh, not in America and not in, on the European poker tour. Yeah. Obviously, there's probably more in Asia. How is poker portrayed in Japan? Let me question. <laughs> Let me question. Uh, you think how many poker rooms in Japan? I mean, it's not illegal poker room. Legal poker room in Japan. Zero. How many? Zero. Okay. I was going to say one, you, or, one or two. Okay. Uh, we have amusement poker room. It is kind of a play money poker room. So right. they play not, yes, not for money. Just uh, like you, you go to like a pool bar or that bar or something like that. And now you think how many amusement poker room we have in Japan. Uh, is, it, uh, is it a lot or a little? 500. Uh, okay. How about you, Joe? 50. Okay. So we have more than 450 poker rooms in Japan. I was close. Yes, I win. Yes, nice yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You won. For sure, yeah. So, yeah. Actually, the poker is not so small in Japan, in my opinion. Um, I think, like, uh, United States have about 500 poker rooms in uh, States, I guess. I I'm not sure, but... Anyway, 450 is, you know, bigger number than everybody thought, I guess. So, um, like, three or four years ago, they only had, like, uh, 70 poker rooms in Japan. So, now we are making big and, you know, poker industry in Japan. So, uh, I think you will see a lot of Japanese poker player in WSOP. I mean, next WSOP, I guess. That's cool. We I, I always appreciate, uh, you know, we've had Japanese players show up from time to time at Monte Carlo. Occasionally we'll get one or two Japanese players. And then we had you at EPT Prague. What did you think of EPT Prague? <laughs> it was exciting. I mean, you know, it was excellent. Perfect. Like, uh, yeah, I, I think EPT is our best poker streaming tournament in the world, I guess. So, yeah, everything was perfect. And uh, I really want to Play it again. What was your life? I mean, you seem like a very young man. What mm -hmm. was your life before all of this? Were uh, you a student? Did you have a job somewhere? I was, uh, yeah, I was playing poker in uh, amusement poker room in Tokyo. And I don't know why, but I, I had a lot of confidence that I would be a professional poker player somehow. <laughs> and uh, my first poker trip was for uh, WPT Cheju. Uh, and somehow I won it. I mean, it was smallest WPT main event, but uh, I still made like hundred thousand US dollars for the prize, and it also made me a little bit famous in Japanese poker community, I guess. Of course. <laughs> and yeah, and yeah. So I, I actually I'm only the WPT winner in Japan right now. And oh, cool. I've started to make videos on YouTube uh, four years ago. And uh, it was a really big turning point in my life. Like, I, I was living for making money and the success. But, you know, now I'm living for a big mission of making poker popular and entertaining people. Welcome back to Monaco and the Poker Stars European Poker Tour presented by Monte Carlo Casino as the action continues from the final table of the 100k Super High Roller. Uh, we saw an elimination just before that impromptu break, taking us down to the final three players. Three players who've agreed they want to get this thing done. 30 minute levels now until the conclusion. Blinds up, 30,000, 60,000 with a 60k big blind ante and going up in half an hour's time. It's James Hartigan, Griffin Benji still in the house. Sure am. And Griffin, I get the impression these guys are keen to be able to play the main event. Yeah, I spoke a bit about uh, this with Joe before the break. That's certainly, you know, uh, a, a factor that, that plays into it, but 
you know, they've been playing a lot of poker. I think it speaks a lot to, you know, probably how much they respect each other and that, you know, having, you know, the blinds not go up as fast isn't going to be necessarily that much of an edge for them. And uh, to speed it up might be better, um, you know, just, just from the burnout that can happen playing all these days. And, of course, they yeah. do have the main to look forward to. I, I, I did suggest that, you know, maybe it wouldn't be their intention to register the main right away today, but to just get some rest and come in for, for day two. Um, so, yeah, definitely wanting to speed this up a bit and, uh, and find a winner. So Adrian Mateos has had the chip lead since the start of the final table, currently playing a stack of five and a half million, yeah. just over 90 big blinds. Interestingly, it's Makita Bodjakovsky, who was the one-time short stack, who now sits in second place with just over 50 bigs. And it's Marius Giersa, who is the shortest of the three remaining players. But 28 bigs can still do a lot of damage, Griffin. Yeah, a lot of play left, even with the in increased uh, sort of time that we're going to have between these blind levels. We did speak when we first started this final table that suggested not to be surprised if we saw uh, Makita here three-handed, despite starting the day in last place with about 20 big blinds. and. Here he is, <laughs> with over 50, playing some really brilliant poker, making, you know, quite frankly, the best call and the best fold of this final table. Um, of course, the big fold with Ace King and that amazing call with 10-5, third pair on the river. Zukowski just limping the button. Mateos checking his option in the big blind, and it is a queen high flop playing to Mateos's favor. Is there a service somewhere? And Bodzukowski. Bets 60,000 on the flop with the action checked to Wasser, him. Bitte. Wasser and the Coke Zero were nice. And again, seeing that Mateos using a check raising for value strategy in a lot of these situations has the sort of maneuverability with this <clears throat> chip lead to put a lot of pressure on his opponents, getting a lot of calls from worse hands. Ace Jack, certainly going to be a consideration for Makita, especially with that Jack of Diamonds. But going to be tough to, to, to continue against the very tough Mateo, so we'll just keep betting. So we'll see what Makita elects to do. Counting out some chips. This doesn't look like a fold to me. Huh. Check and raise and a call, and a five on the turn. Bodzikowski down to 7%. Mateos, huge favorite with just one card to come. Mateos checks a second time. Do you expect Podjakovsky to check this back, Griffin? It's it's tough to say. I think, you know, part of what's going to make up Makita's decisions on the turn card, seeing a check here is, you know, sometimes you're going to have to turn this ace jack into a bluff. You know, Mateos could have been check raising something like 5-6 um, and now has a 5. For Makita to, you know, win, you would have to sort of bet on the turn and bet on the river. Of course, that six wouldn't help things in that particular case. Um, but Makita does decide to go for a check. You know, so tricky is Mateos. I think Makita knows that Mateos would sometimes check a queen there on the turn as well. So yeah. I think Makita was just looking for a much better turn card, something obviously like an ace jack um, or, you know, like a 10 or a king or a diamond. Sixty-five thousand. The 
Teos going for value on the river. 165,000 into 660,000. And Bodzikowski considering making an ace high hero call. Let's it go. So Mateos wins another pot and is back up to around 6 million. A 100 big blind stack with just three players remaining in this super high roller. I uh, should say this is the first of five days of live streaming from the first major event of EPT 2022 back in the Salle des Etoiles, back on the main stage with our brand new set, our brand new look for this season. And we are going to follow up the Super High Roller final table today with four consecutive days of main event coverage. Uh, day 1A of the main was played yesterday. It's day 1B today. Griffin, I think we're going to have more than 1,000 players in the main event. Wow. And we will pick up the action on day two, which is tomorrow, starting 12.30 Central European summertime. Might have to play a long day to try and get this field to a manageable state so we can finish this out on Saturday. That's when we play the final table of the main, Saturday, May 7th. These two again. When you consider all of the high stakes online poker these guys play and all of the super high rollers on the live circuit that they've played over the last five to six years, how much do you think these two know about each other's game? A great deal. I mean, you know, all that time spent at the you know highest level when you're really paying attention to all the smallest details. Yeah. Um, you know that's something that's really gonna gonna translate from each experience with each other, and it's just gonna add a bigger catalog to. And it's that whole he knows that I know thing too. You know, yeah. it's like they're they're very they're an, in, intelli an incredibly intelligent um, you know and skilled players, both fr frankly generational uh, talents. Um, so it's it's really fun to see that, that dynamic play out at such a such a big stage like this. Super high roller trophy will be lifted by one of these three players. First prize in this event, close to 1.4 million euros, better part of a million for the runner-up. Everyone has locked up 611 grand. There were 42 total entries. They played it down to six on day two, which was yesterday. Played into the money. And now 50% of the final table has fallen, leaving these final three. Had you been to Monte Carlo before, Griffin, before the EPT, before you came to play? No, of course not. What, have, what would have brought me <laughs> to Monte Carlo in my early 20s? It would be hard to it's think of something. I think it's in the real range of, of outcomes. People, it's just a place to see, right? I think yeah. people are fascinated with the, yeah. the lifestyle. I mean, and GoldenEye is one of my favorite bonds. Well, there you go. <laughs> also, maybe you're a Formula One fan. Maybe you have come for the Grand Prix one year. I like taking little mopeds on the on the F1 course when they're not, you know, big F1 cars. It's great fun. So a blind v blind situation. Marius Giersa completing in the small with King Eight of Hearts. Adrian Mateos six three off in the big. So cool, it says best Bond video game at the very least. A lot of people have very fond memories of GoldenEye for the N64. Yeah, it was my first uh, FPS. Teos flopping best here with a pair of threes. Okay. 
60,000 apiece. Turn card. There's a jack. So Mateos still three to one favorite. Oh, and the 10 on the river gives him the straight. Kind of a bad card to have is the eight for Kirsa here. It makes it less likely that Mateos has that lower end of the straight. Sometimes you're gonna get action here from, you know, maybe a turned jack or a flopped queen, but a lot of the time, I think you're gonna find, you're gonna get folds here from the kind of hands that Mateos has. Started an audience debate now, Griffin, about what the first ever first person shooter was. Mm. Doom is a popular suggestion. Yeah, I think it's Doom. We've got PP Momo claiming that Wolfenstein was before Doom. Might have been. Yeah, I think I've heard that before. So Mateos folds to the bet of 210,000 on the river. Still up near enough 100 big blinds. Marius Gears are playing around 30 big blinds. And Mikiti Bodzikovsky sandwiched between them with a 42 big blind stack. Blinds up in around 15 minutes. Charlie Parker says... Doom was released in 1993, one year after the seminal Wolfenstein 3D. Chuka has a valid question. Why are you talking about video games when you're watching a final table of poker? Uh -huh. Must be new around these parts. We often go off topic. <laughs> so, Gersa on the button makes it 120k. Mateos with kings in the small blind. With a nine in his hand, Gersa not going to have a lot of hands there willing to necessarily continue for 30 big blinds. Sure, pocket nines will probably go in, but as we only saw one of the cards, I have to imagine the second was probably something like maybe an ace nine off, maybe as strong as that, but could certainly have been something like queen nine suited. Either way, Mateos with the kings takes it down. And the gap between Gersa and Makita closing a little bit here. We have Makita at around 2.56 million. Marius with 1.83. You know, narratively speaking, it feels like it, it should be a Makita Adrian Mateos heads up by the end of this, but Gears has played quite well. Um, you know, hasn't necessarily gotten a lot of hands and a lot of momentum. It's very tough with Mateos on your direct left like that, um, but you know, played those pocket aces very, very astutely to knock out Stall and six to, to begin the final table. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't that long ago, Griffin, that it looked inevitable. It was going to be a Mateos Giersa heads up battle. And Bodzikowski obviously fought back from being the short stack at the start of the day. And there was a huge hand where Bodzikowski used, I think it was <coughs> nine time bank cards after he opened with ace king, got three bet by ace 10, got four bet by kings. And made the correct lay down and i know a lot of people watching were like what is that lay down well the reason you fold there is to give yourself a fighting chance there were short stacks you've got to ladder up and get yourself in contention to win the big prize yeah 
definitely the moment I think we'll all remember most from this final table, at least thus far. Nine Hertz says, that was what, that sounds wild. It was. Get her on time, and then you can see everything. Then race, 180. Three electing to go for a raise strategy there. A little mix, mixing it up a little bit now that he's last in chips, blind on blind, not necessarily wanting to give um, Mateos the free flop, and also, you know, maybe not entirely thrilled about sort of limp shoving a hand like ace nine for as many as near 30 bigs. So plays it as a raise and takes it down. Playing tight today. <laughs> so begins hand at seventy two Ooh. of the final table. And King Five on the button for Mateos. Chip leader raising to 120,000. Let's raise and take it. Unsteeled is enjoying your insightful comments, Griffin. Thank you very much. A six. So Mikita Bozyakovsky is a player we have seen a lot on the EPT. A super high roller reg. In fact, he won the super high roller at EPT Barcelona in 2018. That was worth 1.65 million euros. He has more than $32 million in live earnings. He is 13th on the all-time money list and number one on Belarus's all-time money list. And then there's Adrian Mateos, who's not too shabby a player. <laughs> Calls with Jack Eight. Heads up to the flop. Jack, 10, 7, top pair for Mateos. Um, the standard open has been 120K, Griffin. I noticed that Bodzikowski opening to 150 here. Should we read anything into that? Yeah, I noticed that. I think Mikita may be wanting to uh, dissuade too many um, weaker completes from the big blind for Mateos. Maybe just wanting to take it down preflop. Ace 6 in particular doesn't have a... Great deal of playability, but Jack Eight's going to be too strong for Mateos to consider folding, as we can see why with this 90. this flop. Odziakowski well, continues for ninety thousand, small bet into a pot of three hundred ninety k. Yeah, I don't think that Badziakowski is always going to bet Ace Six. As a combo on this this board, you're going to get a lot of continues from hands. A lot of hands make pairs, straight draws and stuff. But with that ace of clubs, I think um, Mikito wants the flexibility to be able to continue betting on certain, you know, club cards. You know, maybe if this turn card was the queen of clubs, we would see um, Mikita betting big and trying to fold out, you know, something like a 10 or a 7. Right, queen on the turn means Mateos is now an 84% favorite. But a couple more outs for Makita. King will make Broadway. Ace still live. And even without a club on the turn, 
Makita has found a card that he's comfortable barreling on, trying to fold out those hands that like a 10, something like 7, 8, 7, 9, you're gonna have a tough time calling on this turn. But Jack 8 certainly not going anywhere. Teos has checked every street. Check called the flop for 90. Check called the turn for 250. Has checked the river. Is Bodzikowski going to bet again? Just has ace high. Pretty tough spot to bet. As much as Adrian is going to have some hands that are going to be really in the pressure cooker facing a big bet. It's still not easy to do. 700,000. Mateos with second pair. And certainly Mateos is going to be counting all the different kind of bluff combos bad cost he can have and you know it's it's not just the king x of clubs and the ace x of clubs but it's even the ace six off so yeah there's so many combos of bluff combinations that bad is going to have you're going to have to make a call with a hand like jack eight uh, at a pretty decently high frequency and Mateo's playing a time bank card we are running a 30 second shot clock in this event 30 seconds per decision but Mateo's buying extra time with one of those cards, makes the call and wins a huge part from Makita Bodziakowski. And the dynamic really shifts now, Griffin. Yeah, that is going to thrust Makita into third place at 1.34 million, um, just playing uh, over 20 big blinds. So the Adrian Mateo show continues. Bodziakowski has shown a lot of um, you know, strong play, but picked off there for one of the bigger pots, not all in pots of the tournament. Look at the stacks. Mateos, 7.5 million. Giesa, 1.6. Bodjakovsky, 1.3. So that's 120, 20, 125 big blinds for Mateos. 26 for Giesa, 20 for Bodjakovsky. I mean, we're getting to that point where Mateos can start just open jamming on these guys. Yeah, I mean, pretty close to, especially when the blinds do go up in six and a half minutes. Um, it's going to be interesting to, to see what happens once we get into that 20 and under big blind uh, sort of range nearing the danger zone. How much do you play now? 1,175, 1, 1.2, 1.275, 1, 1, 1.275. Thank you. Is it my chip? Yeah, it's yours, but it's 60 now. Oh, oh. yeah, okay, yeah, now, yeah, now. Adrian Rodriguez Delgado watching on YouTube says, this Adrian is so good. What is your 1.6? 1.6. So many I results, so many point. wins, so many huge yeah. scores, and he's still ridiculously young, Griffin. But yeah, now. I mean, broke out onto the scene. Uh, you know, I remember first watching him when I think he was just 18 years old, winning WSOP Europe, and ever since then, it's just stormed through the EPT all over the World the Series. Just incredible Spain, accomplishments yeah. all the way around. Also coming for me. Great. Number three, 120, 85. Oh, could meet some resistance here, though. Opens with King-9. Gears up with Ace-King in the big blind. All in. 
Well, easy to get away from now. Yeah. So we've watched a lot of Adrian Mateos over the last two years. Granted, that's been him playing online as a Mardi 017 on PokerStars, where he has $8.5 million in earnings, $25.6 million in live earnings. And yes, did have a huge win here in Monte Carlo back in 2015. Took down the main event for more than a million euros. And seven years later, looking to add a super high roller title to his resume. Yes, a calling in the small with 9 8. Ace Deuce for Mateos. 1.8, more or less? 1.1, uh, 1.7, 1.8. 1.8, yeah. Yeah. Mateos checks his option. The flop is Ace Jack 10. Open-ended straight draw for Giesa. Top pair for Mateos. Yeah, we've seen a lot of these checked back ace highs <clears throat> in these blind v blind battles. Um, and it always 90. opens the door for the small blind to be repping that texture since it should technically um, more often hit the range of the you know person putting chips into the pot pre-flop. Um, so it's going to create an opportunity for Mateos to catch some bluffing chips wouldn't be surprised if we see more bets from Gersha depending on the runout. And all Mateos needs to do is hold on. And we've been seeing him do a lot of that, just like that Jack 8 hand against Makita a few hands ago. 280. There it is, another bet, this time quite large into the 360K. 280, almost full pot. on the river didn't need to improve but does yeah i wouldn't be surprised if if Ger gersha does wave the white flag here but you can understand the temptation to continue betting because of mateos's capped range you expect mateos sometimes to have a check back ace but a lot of the time going to have a jack x or a 10x that you know might fold to three very large bets by the river um, of course, with, especially with that deuce, deuce not going to be the case. And that's just going to leave Gersha with 585,000. And, uh, yeah, it just has to turn it up. has to be at the bottom of his range. Just really felt like he had to go for it. And a disastrous result. That's no bueno. That's no bueno. We have a fun spot now. <laughs> so I'm sure Adrian having a really fun spot now. Marius now playing a sub-10 big blind stack. Mateos Adrian, are more than 8.7 million. Okay. Closing in on the it's 150 big tonight, blind yeah. bar. 500, 500. And with the blinds about to go up to 4080, that's going to be big trouble for Gersha, who just has under 600k. Um, and the kind of pressure Adrian is going to be able to put on Makita here, who is in second place with 1.19 million. So, wait. Yeah. I have... This uh, 1 mil, 1,150, 1, 180. Okay, thank you. That's empty. It's a big line. 1.5 million. There we go. It's starting. <laughs> and. Makita actually forced to fold the best hand there with the queen nine. It's a good timing. <laughs> 
110 big blinds, playing 12 big blinds, playing five big blinds as we go to 40-80 with an 80k big blind ante. And Mateos shoves the button, putting the pressure on the other two. I mean, Gearsa now actually, down yeah. to four bigs. Griffin. Actually folding the best hand there with the ace three, uh, if the graphics were right there. Um, not much consideration, maybe just not wanting to take the ace in that spot. But with not much to lose and just five big blinds, you got to think maybe an ace should be good enough to, to go for it. So a reminder that as soon as Monte Carlo is wrapped, and bear in mind we've still got a week to go, the Spring Championship of Online Poker starts. And guys, we're going to be streaming cards up coverage of some of the biggest events from Scoop 2022 on the PokerStars Twitch and YouTube channels, including the 25k Super High Roll-Up. Plus, we're going to have three days of main event coverage. Make sure you join us from May 11th our live coverage of Scoop 2022, straight so after EPT okay. Monte Carlo. Gears are all in with 10-9 suited. The Grafton. Yeah, and Mateo's uh, considering this for just five big blinds. You already have one in there. You have 110 you know, back. <laughs> so a little pause for consideration. <laughs> I think, game, huh? you know, three, three and a half a big, big game, blinds yeah. we might call with the 9-5 suited, <laughs> but I agree that five is a little out of reach. And goodness for him that he did it because would have been dominated by the Grafton. Andrew Casatley watching on YouTube says it's been long, so long since I've watched poker. Good to see new faces. Mateos playing really well. Must have been a while, Andrew, because these are not new faces. These are established pros. As we've said, Mateos came onto the scene in 2014, 2015, and has been a dominant force since then. Bojikovsky has made more super high roller final tables than I've had at dinners. <laughs> Super short stack for Marius Gears. And here we go. Mateos open shoving the button. And folds from both players. Yeah, just open season here for Mateos. I mean, we've seen Queen Deuce off shoves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty much whatever he wants it's right now. Like it was 425 or it be Nikita has to call so tight because of that pay jump between second and Tiger third shorter. place. <laughs> <laughs> Not the same. Either yeah, which. I mean, it's what a difference of more than 300 grand, right? Oh. We're talking 611,000 for third, 957,000 for second. Yeah, it would be disastrous to, you know, bust in third here as Makita. All in. All in. 425. Good what is again. happening? Grinding you down, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Rice Stack says, guys, awesome. Another You'll be push. back in the Bahamas next January for the PCA and the PSPC. I think many poker fans will be happy to see this stop being back. I agree. We'll talk more about that in the coming days. A reminder that we will be streaming the main event from tomorrow. Day two through to the final day, the final table on Saturday, the 7th of May. I cannot. One million. One All million. into call for Bodzikovsky and so what is it now? these two are pretty five even, five Griffin. It's five what, eight five. big blinds yes. for Bodzikovsky, so, uh, seven big blinds for Gersa, who's going to have to post the big blind and the ante on this yeah. next hand. Yeah, and you can see the difference that, you know, getting a shove through, um, you know, accomplishes two shoves through, mind you, for Gersha. And that's created the opportunity to be right in the thick of it with Makita. Both 
in that super danger zone under 10 big blinds and now one of them is going to have to be faced all in by this button shove eventually someone's going to have to wake up and be willing to call it off 1 million 3 rolls 1 million <laughs> 425 again yeah. Except I got even more shorter. I want Mateus to mix it up a bit. Like 1,100,000. One million two hundred and twenty-five thousand. If you give me the first prize, yes. <laughs> That's right, John. Mateus is in the super catbird seat right now. He has all of the chips pretty much. Bodjakovsky and Gearset running on fumes. Seven and four big blinds respectively. <laughs> Nine deuce off. I can't remember an occasion in any live MTT, let alone a super high roller, where I've seen one player with 120 bigs and the other two players with five bigs. Yeah, it's really gone Mateus's way on this final table. You think? This is it for Gersa. All in from the button with ace six. Mateus folds the small. No. Oh, Makita with the king nine? Ah, oh, Jack Deuce. Almighty. <laughs> Never calling, huh? Just jamming. So what is it, 385, 5 big, so obviously I can't have nothing. <laughs> 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 obviously I can't have nothing. 385, 5 big, so I have to hold 4, 2, and 6, 7, yeah, my hands. Plays itself, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I bet you Adrian Mateos will go all in this hand. I'm not taking that back. <laughs> okay, I'll give you eight to one odds. I don't care. I'm still Ten not to one. That back. Ten to one. You're not taking. Not taking. You don't it. think he can get seven deuce off and fold? Come on, nothing. He's still jamming. Okay, offer me odds then. I'll take the other side. This is the problem. Give me eight to one. No. On a dollar. One euro. <laughs> you would have won. I know. <laughs> oh, Akita might have the king nine. I keep thinking when he starts thinking he has king nine. Come on, show me the king nine graphic team. Lie to me. Queen ten off. Queen jack. Queen jack. Oh, and the handcuffs that are ICM continue, continue to stop Bodzikovsky and Gierse from being able to do anything other than fold to these open jams from Mateos. And the near identical stacks here, both around 430 and 425,000. That's... Yeah. Okay, 425? Mateos is living the dream right now. Has there ever been a three-handed deal where someone has 20 times both players and the other two players just deal to chop second and third? <laughs> we'll, we'll, let, we'll let Adrian get first and you and me just we'll chop second and third. Oh, here we go. Suited ace going to be enough for the five big blinds of Makita. Virtual all-in from Bojikovsky, leaving himself one chip behind. Oh, the quick call. Just three one time. Versus his gem, huh? mm. Just one time. Mateos puts them all in. Bojikovsky calls the rest off, and here we go. Bojikovsky at risk and dominated. Sorry, but I got a radio. 
I'm team Adrian. <laughs> no worries. Just such a gigantic okay. cash prize difference between third and second. And you can see the regret in Badziakowski's eyes. You know, you got to shove this hand in, but you hate to get cooler. Such a huge difference. But we've seen the Ducks fly from Akita before. Did get it in deuces to sixes. Is there another deuce up the sleeve? Well, it could be two of them now. That is a bad start. This could be all over on the turn. Bodzikovsky has less than 1% equity to win the pot outright. Yeah, and that's going to do it. Yeah. Ace. Oh, drawing to a chop. Oh, Not touche. Yet. Ace nice. is coming. Oh. I didn't, I didn't tell. Barry Greenstein does not make an appearance, and Mikita Bodzikovsky busts in third place, cashing for just over 611,000 euros. Great ladder for Marius Giersa, <laughs> who's now locked up the better part of a million. Uh, we are going heads up, and I'm going to take the number of heads up hands, the over under, I'm setting at two. Because Adrian Mateos has 124 big blinds, and Marius Giersa has. Four. <laughs> Doesn't seem fair. I assume we won't need a break for heads up. <laughs> Got 18 minutes to run on this level. Now, the plan was, Griffin, at the end of this 18 minutes, we were going to have a break before the next session. I think there is a very good chance that this is going to end before we get to that break. Yeah, get the get the crown out of the bubble wrap because we might be putting it on the head of Adrian Mateos for this super high roller here very shortly. It's a confirmation that it is 10.1 million playing 385,000 at the 4080 blind level. So just a, a slim advantage for Adrian Mateos here. Yeah, just a bit of a chip edge. And we just saw Bodzikovsky cash out for 611k. That means second place, 957,590 euros. And that winner's prize, which looks like it's got Adrian Mateos' name on it, 1,385,430 euros, plus the Super High Roller Trophy. So I set the line at two, Griffin. Are you taking the over or the under? I'll take the over, yeah. Okay. I think, uh, you know, I think Gersa has a couple folds in him before just getting it in. And can also just win once they're, they're all in, so. Ah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> well done. <laughs> You're going to need it, buddy. You're going to need good luck. <laughs> we have checked. They're not interested in talking deal. <laughs> Call. There we go. Hand number one of heads up. It is all in and a call. That looks like a king and a six. Ooh, a six. dominated. Yeah, it is a domination oh, situation. It and it's yeah. domination nation. A good spot yeah. for Marius Gierse. Many kings under there. Domination situation. One in the floor. <laughs> or two. Oh, that's what. That's one is. Mateos has been running pretty good today. The flop does not have a king on it. Ace high is holding. And Marius. It's looking good for a double up here. 84% favorite. Two clubs out there as well for Gersha, so looking very nice. Just has to fade a king on the river. 
It's a deuce. So there is the double up. The beginning of the collapse. Well, that didn't do too much damage, but of course, two or three more like that, and it is game on. Right now, Gears are <coughs> around 10 big blinds, so still in the danger zone. Adrian just not used to losing hands today. Doesn't even know what to do with, what do I do with my hands? <laughs> not stacking new chips. All in. Well, you're right to take the over, Griffin. That was the second hand of heads-up play, and we are still going. Yes! <laughs> 42 total entries. Prize pool of 4 million euros. Down to the final two. Huge difference between second and first. And a huge deficit for Marius Gierza to overcome as this heads-up battle continues. Hand at 91 of the final table. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me that Mateus is going to mix in some limps with a hand like this. Not one you really want to shove and get called for the 11 big blinds, but not one you ever really want to get a, a walk, so decides to go for the limp in. It's a crunchy board, all clubs. Giersa has the nine of clubs. Teos putting on the pressure though, with just five high, bets 80,000, gets the call. Yeah, near the bottom of the range of what Gears is going to call with here, but Nine of Clubs thinks it's good enough to, to see a turn. See if Mateo has another no equity bet here. Trying to fold out those sort of 7x yeah. hands, those 9x with the with a club. Maybe even get some folds of Jack X, certainly by the river, but maybe even by the turn. With that bet on the turn, Mateos takes it down. Kiesa drops down to the eight big blind mark. And you see how tricky Adrian's sizing is there. You would think that in a situation like that, we would see a big size from Adrian trying to fold out those, you know, middle, bottom pair type situations, but instead, Decides to go for a smaller bet size that's really going to fold out hands like the 9x, 9 of clubs, um, and, and just, just win it that way instead of loading a pot that you really have no business winning. There it is. Can Mateo open, uh, wake up in the big blind? It's just jack four for Girsa and king three. For sub-10 big blinds, does make the call. Here we go, this could be it. Mateos with the best hand, king high. Giesa does have live cards. Mateos not a huge favorite here. But if king high holds, we will have our winner. 60-40. Yeah, anything can happen in these 60-40 situations. This could be the end for Giersha or the start of a potential comeback. Ace, queen, six. King high is holding. I found you perfect. Mateos, three to one favorite now to win this super high roller. And Marius Giersa is going to need to see a jack or a four on the river or this is over.
It's a nine. Oh, Guess is oh, a goner. Adrian Mateos has won <laughs> the EPT 22 yeah. Super High Roller here awesome. in Monte Carlo. An absolute elation from Adrian Mateos. Was so stoic over the course of this final table, just so in the zone, taking on some of the best in the world, but now finally some emotion. Fist bumps and hugs from his very supportive rail. Just an incredible competitor and, you know, one of the best talents in the entire world. Adrian Mateos won the main event here in Monaco back in 2015, becoming the first Spanish champion on the European Poker Tour. He follows that up seven years later with a win in the Super High Roller. A 100K buy-in and a cash-out of 1,385,430 euros. And I guess it's a case of congratulations <laughs> to Marius Gierse, who got the ladder, Griffin. It was either going to be him or Bodzikowski who went out in third. They were pretty much even with five big blinds apiece. He managed to ladder, managed to get heads up against Mateos, and he cashes out for the bigger amount. I would upgrade this to congr congratulations. This was always Adrian Mateos' day. It felt inevitable the whole time. And to be able to manage to sneak into second place, I bet that is a very satisfied customer in Marius Gears. Gears, sir. 957,590 euros, the runner-up. But it is definitely congratulations to Adrian Mateos. He is our super high roller champion. So let's recap how this went down. If you missed any of the action today, this is the story of the super high roller. We started with six players. And after only eight hands, we lost businessman Kent Stahler. He ran nines into aces and cashed out in sixth place for 285K. Five hands later, Laszlo Bushtas got his short stack in against Mikolai Vaskoboynikov. The Belarusian turned a straight to send Bushtas to the rail in fifth. His luck soon ran out, though. Mateos flopping a pair, knocking him out in fourth. Cashed for 468k. As we just referenced, Mikita Bodzikowski went out in third. Ace deuce, no match for ace 10. 611k for third. And one of the shortest heads up battles in EPT history. Huge chip deficit for Gearsa. And in just a few hands, Adrian Mateos took down the title and gets that 1.4 million euro first prize. So Mateos will be presented with his trophy and of course he'll be delighted with that seven figure cash adding to his what is it 25.6 million dollars in live earnings another near enough 1.4 million on top of that but decent cash is for everyone else as well remember they played into the money last night everyone came into the final table guaranteed something guaranteed a profit on the 100k buy-in but it really is a result for adrian mateos and he is out on the balcony with joe stapleton Good to see you again. Uh, you won over a million euros here back in 2015. It's been a hot minute since the EPT's been here, so I guess my first question is, how does it feel to be back in Monte Carlo? It feels amazing. I guess it's a lucky place for me. I always have really good results here, so really happy to come back every year. Now, there's a lot of people out there that say that you're maybe the best player in the world. This certainly helps that argument. Uh, how do you feel? Of, of course, it feels amazing that people say that, and I consider myself one of the best, because if not, I won't play this 100K, so yes, I, I will keep working really hard to, to try to keep winning again. One last question, have you decided which of those boats you're going to buy yet? <laughs> I guess not yet, Monaco is too expensive, even for, I need to win many, many tournaments of this one. Well, luckily, there's still <laughs> the main event, Adrian, congratulations once again. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Joe, and congratulations to our champion. That's it for the Super High Roller. For a full recap of today's action, check out the Pokestars blog. And, of course, the guys continuing to follow the action in the main event. And that's what we will be streaming tomorrow. We're going to pick up the action in the main. It'll be day two, and we will be here at the earlier time of 12.30 Central European Summer Time. Day two, day three, day four, and the final table to come. Hope you've enjoyed our coverage so far. Join us again tomorrow. For now, from Griffin Benger, Joe Stapleton, and me, James Hartigan, it is goodbye from Monte Carlo.
Everybody wait for the camera. Take one coming at you. You better be up for the action. Cause honey, this hook gon' catch you. They ain't ready for this. Fresh T blue jeans going steady on this. That is shit I wanna miss. Lesson over. Class dismissed. I put the eyes on me. All the eyes on me. So what you wanna see? You're checking me out. 